the orientation of uh, the vessel. In case of creating a horizontal vessel, to define the orientation in SEG and um, Autodesk Inventor, if we take a look to a vessel like that, for from the left view, here uh, you can define the elevation of uh, nozzles. And from the back view, you can define the orientation of nozzles. Here, at uh, if you take a look from the back view, here, for example, this nozzle will be located on zero degree. So if we come back here. So the nozzles here will be located on uh, zero degree. Uh, and the 90 degree will be on the right hand side. 190 degree will be at the bottom here and 270 will be like that. So if you take a look from the back view, you will get the orientation of the nozzles uh, as a reference in SEG and uh, Autodesk Invent. So let's open a vertical visit to indicate the uh, uh, the vertical visits. Here, if we take a look from the top view, but the world will be flipped like that. That will give you the orientation of nozzles. All, all of the orientation will be on the uh, clock, uh, clockwise direction. So uh, as you can see for the horizontal vessel, uh, zero and the 90, so the direction will be in uh, counter uh, clockwise direction, will be on the clockwise direction. The same for uh, the top view, if you flip this one like that, the orientation will be like that, zero degree, 90 degree uh, and uh, 180. So the direction of the orientation will be on the uh, clockwise direction like that. Like uh, in this uh, sample of the vessel. So all of those nozzles will be located on zero degree and here 190 degree. Okay. For the concept of uh, the user coordinate system, here in SEG software, uh, SEG depends on the uh, UCS to make the uh, assembly. Here for each element, if you uh, open it in Autodesk Inventor and check the tree of this element, SEG will create a start UCS and end UCS for each element, for the main elements, to be able to uh, assemble them. Okay. So if you have a flange like that and shell like that, and the this shell will be after uh, the flange. So SEG will use uh, the user coordinate system here at the start of this shell to uh, assemble it with the uh, user coordinate system at the end of the flange here to uh, make them matches to get the uh, final assembly of both of them. Regarding the location of uh, elements, uh, here each element uh, or each attachment will be uh, uh, added to the main element. The reference point of, of this element will be located to the first seam line of this element, not the tan line, because SEG and Autodesk Inventor don't understand the uh, concept, concept of the datum line uh, if you have previous elements before uh, the main element. So if you would like to define a nozzle location, you will need to define it from the seam line or the start point here of this element, not for, for a reference. So you will need to calculate the location of this nozzle from uh, the seam line of this element. The concept of uh, gap and overlap. If you would like to make a gap between elements, there is a type called a gap. You can use it to make a gap between elements like, like that. So you can define the gap between elements or you can use it to make an overlap. So uh, here, as you can see, this cone, that cone here, you have uh, an end UCS here and the start UCS here at the beginning of the cone here. That's the start UCS. So if you would like uh, uh, the default option, uh, the cone, this UCS will be welded here. So the cone comes directly after the, this shell come, comes here after the shell. But if you would like to make an overlap here, so you will need to make 
uh, an overlap element, this element will give you the ability to move back this uh, the next element over the previous element, like that. Unreal elements. Uh, for the unreal elements, uh, actually, we can use them uh, in case of if we have a, a nozzle connected to another nozzle. Uh, as discussed uh, on the previous uh, slides, no option to add an attachment to another attachment. You can add attachment to a parent element. But if you have a nozzle, this nozzle is an uh, attachment, not a parent element. So how you can add a nozzle to another nozzle? Okay. Or how you can add a skirt event to a uh, skirt? Okay. The same basic. How to add uh, an attachment to a child, not a parent? So in this case, we will need to use a real element. This element, uh, uh, we can add it at the end of the attachment, like uh, the nozzle or uh, after the head of uh, uh, the parent of the skirt. So uh, and it finds the information of this uh, real element. After that, we can add attachments to this uh, element. And we can, this, uh, inshallah, we will discuss that during the uh, sample that we have, which is a vertical vessel with a skirt. Uh, some uh, common mistakes, like modifying elements during uh, saving uh, and during running uh, on Autodesk Inventor. Uh, during running uh, on Autodesk Inventor, when you uh, create uh, a vessel, and send commands to Autodesk Inventor to create the 3D model of the vessel. You will need uh, to stop the assembly. Okay, after that, you can save uh, information for element. And we can discuss this, uh, that uh, during the uh, demonstration. Uh, uh, selecting another node without uh, checking the appearing form. And uh, like when you select uh, a, a shell from the tree, for example, and sometimes uh, during the delay, you, you may get the form for a flange or something like that. So, so you should be se select, be sure that you select the shell and click on the icon of the shell. And we will, I will show you that uh, during the uh, demonstration. And the next, uh, uh, issues we can discuss it during the uh, session. So uh, here we have uh, this sample. We have this vertical pressure vessel with uh, a skirt. Sorry. We have uh, this uh, sample for a vertical vessel with a skirt and shell and top head. Now, inshallah, we will uh, proceed creating the 3D model of this equipment and add uh, all attachments. After that, we will proceed uh, by preparing the uh, template and use uh, the template in uh, our project to uh, create the uh, fabrication drawings for uh, this equipment. Okay. Here we have uh, SEG software. And from here, uh, let's create a new project. So by clicking on new, we will uh, start creating a new uh, project. Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Ahmad. Yes. Uh, uh, we have some questions. So what we propose, like, uh, we'll share this question so that you can cover in between, you know, during your training session, like, uh, whatever you feel suitable, you can just consider this, like, uh, as a response. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, so it will be, I think, better. So initially, at this moment, uh, we'll share you the uh, question what uh, we already prepared so it will be helpful for us you know to understand in better way okay, okay. so uh, I, I will do one thing on uh, i think uh, on message box uh, we'll share this question okay okay if you would like to send it to me right now and uh, uh, uh just share us your email id uh, we'll share to you on your email as well Okay, kindly forward uh, it uh, to uh, Image Graphics team right now, and inshallah they will forward it. Uh, okay, 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 okay. And I think uh, Libin has my uh, contact. Uh, 
WhatsApp number. Uh, you can send me uh, on the WhatsApp number the, the comment. Okay, we can uh, proceed with uh, the, uh, this visit. We will uh, make it to the, the demo today. Here you will write the project name, and uh, from here we will select the project location. So we will make it on the desktop. And from here you will select the suitable module for uh, this project. In this case, we will select the uh, pressure vessel. And from here, let's click on finish. Now SAE uh, will start creating the uh, project uh, information, like creating the folder and the required data inside. If you uh, take a look to the desktop here, here we have uh, this folder, and you will find inside this folder the SEG project file and the uh, IBJ uh, folder uh, file for the inventor project, the assembly folder, drawing folder, and the parts folder. Okay, now let's uh, come back to our project. Uh, from here, when you select the project uh, node, you can define the project uh, information like the client. Uh, that and the uh, manufacturer. And you can save that. Okay. After that, you can select the uh, uh, visit level. And from the visit level, uh, if you select the setting uh, tab from here and select equipment setting, you will be uh, at the first, you should select the equipment from the tree, uh, not any other uh, node. So when you select, uh, for example, if you select the project and click on the equipment setting, you will get this uh, message, which is invalid visual mode because you don't select the visit. So you need to define the visual information. So you should select the visit from here. After that, select the equipment setting. So you will get this form. From here, you can define the uh, visual uh, orientation and the uh, direction of the assembly. In that case, we will make the assembly from bottom to top. So we will start from the bottom head to the top head. You can define the uh, uh, visual uh, service like uh, storage vessel, for example, and the tag of the vessel, which is the name of the vessel. When we change it here, it will be changed on the tree. So uh, let's change it from here like that and define the serial number of this equipment and define the delivered blade dimensions. Those dimensions will be the available blade dimensions in your uh, so you will use them to fabricate this equipment. So you will define that length and width uh, here. And that will give you uh, it's easier the ability to calculate the required number of blades in the same sheet. Click save. Now you can figure that the equipment name directly renamed here. And if you would like to make a rename, you can make it from here by right click on the equipment uh, node and make a rename. OK, this step should be done before creating any elements on uh, Autodesk Inventor. And we will discuss that during uh, the model to show you that the name of the element, uh, the Autodesk Inventor element, uh, takes the name of the visit before the name of the node. And so you uh, cannot change the name of the equipment after creating the uh, uh, Autodesk Inventor model. And if you would like to make that, you will need to reset Inventor uh, model okay, to delete all Inventor items because the name of both elements will take the uh, equipment name. Okay, here after selecting the uh, visual node from the tree, you will be able to define the uh, data of the design data here. You will be able to uh, add other information for the equipment, and you can import an Excel sheet uh, here. 
Okay, the format of the Excel sheet, we can discuss this uh, format. Here we have a sample for uh, this format here. Let's open this Excel sheet. Okay, this Excel sheet so should include three columns. Okay, uh, in case of uh, uh, vessels or storage tanks, but in case of uh, heat exchanger, you will need four columns instead of three. You will need four columns, not three. In case of heat exchanger, because you have a shell side and a tube side uh, columns. Uh, here for for that, you, you can fill the cells like that. And uh, keep sure that no empty cells. For example, if we if we remove this value from here, let's uh, make it empty value. And if you would like to import this Excel, Excel sheet to SCG, so let's uh, save it first. So let's save this one without empty value here. And let's go back to SCG and let's try to import this one. So let's go to the uh, desktop and for the temp let's import the design data okay here after getting uh, the information from the new excel sheet here we have the uh, new information set that saved or get it from the uh, excel sheet here that we saved after that we can save this uh, those data that received from the Excel sheet. Uh, now let's proceed with the uh, next uh, steps by creating the project elements. Here, by by the way, uh, here for example, uh, if you select the vessel and take a look to the uh, toolbox, you will be able to add elements like that from here. And to save uh, this uh, area, we can close that and deal directly with the element tab. So from here, let's select this bottom head. Okay, and from here, let's select the suitable type for the head. You will find uh, more than 17 types of different heads. For example, you have an ellipsoidal head. This head uh, has a half of ellipse, not include a crown or knuckle radius, it's a half of ellipse. But if you uh, would like to make uh, an ellipsoidal hood with crown and the knuckle radius, you can select this type and define the uh, inside diameter of this head, define the uh, thickness, the straight flange length, and the minimum thickness after forming, and the material of this uh, of uh, this head. And if you click save. Before uh, selecting this button, which is the flip direction, if you uh, click on uh, create assembly, if you uh, take a look from the left view, you, you will find that the direction of, of the convex of this head uh, in the wrong direction we need to make it at uh, the bottom so we need to make a flip here so the order of flip you will find it in some elements uh, like head or uh, flange so you can uh, use it to flip the direction of this element in case of uh, click on save and click on start you will get the correct direction of all the heads OK, after that, we will uh, add some attachments, uh, the other main elements like if we. Uh, we have a shell element here. After that, uh, we have a top head. Uh, so we can uh, select the vessel mode. After that, we can add an element like the shell so from here let's add a shell and one okay. 
And from common, you can figure that you have many different types of shell. In that case, we will select the shell type, which is uh, a blade with a longitudinal welding line. From here, we will define the inside diameter of this shell, the thickness, the uh, longitudinal welding line orientation, and the length of this shell. Okay, and the gap of the weld, and here the uh, material of this shell. Let's click save, and let's add the top head. From here, let's add top head. And let's make it looks like the bottom head. So from here, automatically, you will create uh, the top head looks like the bottom head. And if you select it from here, you will get the same uh, information that you defined. But you will need to remove this flip direction to get the uh, convex direction on the right uh, side. Now let's create the main elements. OK, now we have. Uh, the main elements of, of the vessel. We have the bottom shell and the top head. Now let's add the attachments. Here, let's add the skirt to the, the bottom head. So by selecting the bottom head from the tree and uh, select uh, or open, it, open the uh, elements tab, you will find the available attachments here. Now we let's select the skirt. And when you select the skirt node, uh, from the tree, you will find uh, two different types of skirt by defining the top and the bottom diameter or uh, make it uh, um, a skirt from by four small leaves. Here, let's define the uh, inside uh, diameter uh, of the skirt. and the thickness of uh, the skirt, the longitudinal welding line orientation, uh, the length of the skirt, so the height from the tan line. Uh, uh, yes, from the tan line. Here's the gap and the material of the skirt, the number of sheets, it's one sheet. The base ring uh, ID. The base ring OD. The thickness of the base ring and the bolt circle diameter, the hole diameter, and the number of holes is eight. Base blade material. Let's add uh, ribs. So the uh, rib spacing. And uh, the uh, bottom width, the height, the top width of the rib, the rib thickness, the material of the rib, and we have a compression ring. So let's add the compression ring, the uh, radial length, and the uh, whole diameter at the top, and the top, uh, the thickness of the compression. Thing. It's 35 uh, material. And if you would like to add multi uh, skirt plates, you can define uh, them from here as bear this uh, drawing. So the length of the first course, second course, and the third course. And the fourth one will be calculated automatically or the last one. Let's add, uh, if you would like to add a sleeve pipe, you can add a sleeve pipe from here. Hello? Yes. Yes, sir. This length, skirt length, what we given, it will be by TL2, bottom of the base ring, right? Yes, as the mentioned length. here on this figure, figure the yeah, this one, this one is TL2, TL2, bottom of the base ring or top of the base ring? The bottom of the base ring. Bottom of the base ring. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, so here from the uh, tailing log, uh, if you would like to add a uh, bracing beam, you can add the information of the bracing beam from here. And if you would like to add a tailing log, you can add it uh, from here. So let's say define the uh, uh, tailing log material. The uh, bottom width of uh, the tailing log and the top width, the same. The height of the tailing lug, the thickness of the tailing lug, let's make it 20. Uh, the uh, tailing lug uh, orientation will be on 90 degree. Uh, uh, the radius of uh, the tailing lug, let's make it 80. The whole diameter, the whole offset, if we uh, take a look to the image here, that's the whole offset. So let's make it on the whole offset from uh, the end. Let's make it half of the height, like that. And we have a single uh, lifting lug. So let's click on save. If you would like to add a color to this uh, lifting lug, you can add it from here. Okay, now let's uh, create the skirt. Okay, so if you make the simply, if you run the uh, simply from uh, SEG, you will need to stop the assembly before uh, creating, uh, uh, saving or making saving for another L. So let's add uh, a nozzle and to show you that uh, how we can uh, avoid uh, or stop the uh, assembly. So let's select the bottom head and let's add a nozzle. So from here, let's add uh, N3 nozzle. So uh, N3 is two inches nozzle as a nozzle from pipe. So you can add a nozzle from pipe, nozzle from plate, long wood neck uh, nozzle with the rest face. So here we will select uh, nozzle from pipe, select the schedule of uh, the nozzle, the nozzle uh, offset from the visual center line. So it's on zero degree. Let's add a rebad. The rebad will be 65 and the thickness of the rebad will be like that. And the name of the nozzle will be drain. That's uh, the service of uh, this nozzle, the material of the pipe. And let's calculate the uh, projection after adding the uh, uh, the elbow. So let's save this. And uh, let's select the external connection of this nozzle. So for each nozzle, you will find an external connection. And in case of you have a nozzle with internal and external projection, you will find internal connection and external connection. Here, let's select the external connection, and from here, let's uh, add an elbow. In the elbow. Okay. After selecting this uh, node, which is the elbow node, you will find a list of available types of elbow. Let's select elbow 90 degree uh, as a long radius. Select the size and the schedule and the orientation of uh, of uh, this uh, elbow. Let's keep it uh, zero degree. And if we check the orientation of the orientation of uh, this nozzle, which is uh, N3, let's take a look here. N3 on uh, 270. So let's come back. Uh, to the nozzle and define the orientation from here and click on save. Now, if we uh, open the uh, calculator button, here you can define the projection of this vessel from the seam line okay, to the center of the elbow. So if we open this uh, form from the bundle, here this nozzle on level uh, with a negative value is 700 millimeters, but from the tan line, not the seam line. So we need to increase this value with 50 millimeters to be from the seam line. So it will be 750 with a negative value, 750. That's uh, the projection of uh, the nozzle. And uh, click on calculate. Now SEG will start uh, creating a sketch to calculate the required uh, or the actual external projection of, of uh, the pipe. So from here, you will find the actual external projection of the pipe. So let's click on save. Now let's add another uh, pipe, which is that one. So after creating this nozzle with a reinforced bed, we have an elbow here. 
after that we have a pipe and a standard plan so let's select the external connection and from here let's add a pipe so in the pipe so let's select this pipe and define uh, as the uh, pipe size so select the pipe from here select the size of the pipe select the schedule of this pipe and the lens let's make it 700 millimeters right now after that we will calculate the uh, actual required uh, lens to get the projection of 900 millimeters now let's add a flange so from here let's add in the flange okay let's uh, start creating the assembly so we will create n3 after that the uh, elbow after that the pipe okay during this creation if you would like to stop you can click on stop button okay and wait a little bit uh, until finishing the, uh, the current task which is creating n3 okay so we Take a look here. Now we have uh, N3. And the assembly stopped at this uh, level. And you can figure that it's not assembled yet. Here we have three different color, the black color of the font, the black color font. Uh, that means this element is created uh, on Autodesk Inventor and assembled uh, in a correct way. Here for the blue color, that means it's created on Autodesk Inventor, but not assembled yet. The red color means this element not created on Autodesk Inventor or need to uh, update. OK, so by that way, by clicking on stop, we stop creating the assembly to make any modification. So if we if you would like to change the length of this pipe, for example, you can you can modify it and and save. After that, you can. Uh, proceed uh, the simply again. So now we have uh, this nozzle with that projection. And if, he, if you would like to get the correct lens of, of the pipe, let's make a quick uh, drawing to measure the required lens of, of the pipe. So we make a view like that. And make the visible lines appear. So the uh, and let's add a center line. Okay, so to measure the projection here. So the projection of this nozzle from the center line to facing is nine, uh, 890. So we need to increase the pipe length with 10 millimeters. So let's close this one. And from SCG, let's increase the pipe length with 10 millimeters. Now let's add uh, the top head nozzles. We have nozzle N4 and N5. So let's add uh, those nozzles uh, to the top head. From here, let's select the top head and the from elements. Let's select uh, nozzle and let's add in four. Okay, in the four is uh, two inches uh, nozzle is a schedule 160. Here's the enforced band and the thickness of the enforced band the material and the offset of this uh, nozzle is 350. here if we take a look the offset of this nozzle from the uh, center line and uh, the surface of, of this nozzle is uh, here nozzle in the four it's uh, vent So in the four is a vent nozzle. And let's click on save. Now let's add uh, uh, another attached flange to the external point. So in the four, in the four. 
change. Okay, and from here, let's select Weldonic Resident Face Flange, the uh, size and rating, schedule, and let's click Save. Now, if you open the uh, nozzle uh, calculator from here, you can define the projection of uh, this nozzle. So if we come back here, so the projection from uh, the tan line is uh, 726. So we will need to increase uh, 50 millimeters to calculate the right projection from the scene line. So that's the projection. And let's calculate the projection of the pipe. So here is easy. You will start creating a sketch and calculate the required projection. Will appear here after calculating. Okay, now that's the projection of the pipe. So from the uh, center line of the pipe to the end of the pipe, that's the projection of the pipe. So let's click save, and let's add another nozzle which is in five, five, and let's click add. And from here, if you would like uh, to make it looks like in four, you will uh, select it from here. So. Uh, to avoid repeating the information again, you can select it from here in four. And the same for the flange. Let's add another flange, which is in five flange. After adding it, you can select it from the tree and make it looks like in four and click on save. Now, if you come back to nozzle in five, you will find the same information of in four. So we will need to make the offset at zero. Yes, so in the five on the center line of the vessel, so the offset will be zero. And the, uh, the name of the vessel will be this. And let's click on save. And from the calculator, let's uh, calculate the where the projection of, of this pipe. So by clicking on calculate, as discussed, it's easy to start creating some sketches to calculate the required value for the projection and you can figure that it's a different from the current value so let's click on save okay now let's read the simply Okay, uh, I think we need to modify the orientation of nozzle uh, in the four. If we take a look from the top view in the four, uh, located on uh, 270, but I think we make it on zero degree. So if you would like to stop the assembly to modify that, you can stop from here or wait until this button becomes blue again. So select in the four, and from the orientation, we can define the orientation of this nozzle and click save and now let's run out of this campaign too. Okay, now we have nozzle in the four and in uh, five. Uh, let's add some attachments to this skirt, like skirt events, access, and opening. So how we can do that? In uh, our uh, presentation here, we discuss the uh, unreal elements and when we can use them. That's a case to use the uh, unreal elements to uh, add some attachments to this child, which is the skirt. So how we can do that? If you select the vision uh, node from uh, the tree, you can add, uh, we will add uh, a shell type uh, and we name it as a connection. OK, 
Okay, and this uh, connection point, we will, uh, if you get down here on this list, you will find here two different types for the connection point. The first type is a connection point for nozzles as a shell. Okay, that means you will define the inside diameter and the thickness of, of this unreal element. If you take a look to the image on the uh, right hand side, you can figure that uh, this element is not a real element. You can use it uh, at the end of nozzle uh, or any other attachment to add some uh, other attachment. Or you can make it as a connection point from a pipe. If in your case, for example, uh, you have a nozzle and you would like to attach another nozzle to this nozzle. So in that case, you may need to select a connection point from pipe. In our case, it's a nozzle from uh, the skirt is uh, a blade. So from here, let's add this uh, connection uh, point with the same inside diameter of the skirt and the thickness of the skirt. And let's click on save. As you can figure, this connection point will be after the top head here. So the connection point will be here. We need to move this connection point to be at that same line to be able to uh, add the reference of uh, elements from here, not from the top line. So we will move this connection point to be uh, after the bottom head. So from here, let's click, click, right click on this one. And from move, let's click on uh, move after. And you will get this form. And we will select the bottom head to move uh, the connection point after the bottom head. And let's click on move. Okay, here you can figure that the uh, some elements color converted to blue lines. That means the uh, assembly constraints will uh, be uh, checked again from SCG. And for the lead color, this element not created yet. Now uh, to create the skirt uh, vent and skirt opening, skirt access, let's select uh, this connection point. Okay, and from here, let's select a nozzle with internal and external projection, which is nozzle type B. Okay, by clicking on it, let's uh, add the first element, which is uh, uh, skirt vent one. Okay, we have this skirt uh, vent, and we will define it as uh, a pipe with internal and external projection. It's four inches pipe with a, sc a schedule. 80. And the location, if we take a look to the location here for the skirt event, it's located on 400 millimeters from the tan line. Okay, but <clears throat> we will reference it from the same line. So this value will be 450 with a negative value. So from here, we will define this value to be like that. And the orientation. We take a look to the orientation here. The skirt event one will be 225. So the orientation will be like that. And it's skirt event. That's the service of this nozzle. And let's click Save. Uh, now to define the internal and external uh, projection. If you would like to calculate the projection uh, directly uh, from here, the outside diameter of this skirt is and let's check the zoom. The uh, outside diameter 1240. Okay, divided by two plus the projection of the uh, uh, skirt event. So the projection of the skirt event should be like that. So if we click on calculate, so you can figure that the external projection will be 50 millimeter. If we click save, automatically it will be reflected here. The same for the internal projection, we will make it 50 millimeter and let's click on save. Now let's add another skirt event. So from here, let's add a, a nozzle with internal and external projection, SV2. Let's click on add. And from here, directly, you can make it same as SV1 and click save 
After that, we can modify the orientation of all in one time. So from here, let's add another, sorry, with internal and external projection, SV3, and add from here. Let's make it looks like V1, skirt event one. The last skirt event, SV4, click add. And let's make it looks like SV1. After that, you can select the nozzle uh, or the vent. After that, it changes the orientation. Here's the orientation of this one. 45 degrees. 135. Like that. Now let's add a skirt uh, opening. So from here, by the same type of nozzle, let's add skirt opening, skirt opening, K1, and let's click on save. And this skirt opening, if we uh, take a look to the skirt opening on this table, it's eight inches with the schedule 80. Okay, and the orientation, the elevation will be the same elevation of the nozzle, and the orientation will be the same orientation of the nozzle. So let's come here and Select the size, select the schedule. After that, the location, it will be the same location of the nozzle. Okay, as we discussed, the location will be add, will, we will add the straight flange length and add the negative value. So it will be 750. So it's 750, the same orientation of this nozzle and the projection. Okay. Opening. Okay, let's click on save and from the calculator we can define the uh, projection so the external projection will be 50 millimeter and the same for the internal projection will be 50 millimeter. now let's add a skirt axis so from here let's select nozzle shell nozzle type b skirt axis one okay and from here uh, this uh, axis is uh, a nozzle from plate. If we take a look here, it's a fabricated pipe. That's the outside diameter and uh, thickness. So we need to define it as a fabricated pipe. So let's say the second type, which is nozzle from plate connected to shell, and define the uh, outside diameter of this pipe and the thickness of this pipe, the longitudinal building line orientation gap and the location, if we take a look here to the location of this axis. So we need to increase this value with 50 millimeters. So that the orientation of this one, which is the skirt axis. Okay, the skirt axis on uh, 90 degree. So let's add it 90 degree and here. Let's click on save. The same for the calculator. We can make the external projection uh, uh, 100 millimeter instead of 50 millimeters. So we can increase that value to be like that and click on save. The same for internal projection. We will make it 100 millimeter and click on save. Okay, now let's uh, create the uh, simply by clicking on the start simply. To add the skirt, then skirt uh, opening and axis. Now we have the four vents 
the skirt opening. At last, the uh, skirt axis. Okay. Now we need to uh, add uh, grounding lugs to the skirt. Here we have uh, a grounding lug. If we take a look here, we have uh, two grounding lugs. Okay, so let's select the uh, these, uh, connection point, this connection point. And from elements, let's add uh, a grounding lug. So from here, let's select this. one okay and let's select the suitable type for your case and you can figure that uh, this type of uh, grounding lug inclu include two holes uh, parallel okay uh, 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 parallel to the visual center line not perpendicular to the visual center line something like that we can modify it on the part itself after creating it into this game inventor so let's do that so from here, let's define the width to be 100 millimeter, the length, thickness, and uh, the chamfer at the end. We have a chamfer or not? Yes, we have a chamfer here. And for uh, the location of this grounding lug, so we we have uh, we have this uh, length for uh, the skirt plus the 50 millimeters. After that, we will remove uh, this value to get the location of this ground blood. So we will define it uh, with a negative value here, to, like that. And the orientation, the first one will be from 135, uh, no over thickness. Uh, the whole diameter, uh, let's make it 10 millimeter and the whole uh, offset. After that, we can create the simply. So here you can figure that we have this ground lung like that. And if you would like to make a modification for the hole, uh, if you open it like that, you will be able to open this ground lung from here and modify the sketch of holing. So let's go inside here and make a slice graphs. And let's add two other points here and there and make them parallel to this one. And let's define the spacing from here to there. Sorry, 25 millimeters. And the same for here. Make it 30 millimeters and let's click on finish. Now to modify the holes, all what we need to, let's add those two holes and remove that one so we will get those two holes here okay and we can save that by clicking on save after that close that one and you will get the modification on the element as you can see here okay now let's add some other attachments to the shell like nozzles manway and uh, uh, internal uh, rungs so from SEG, let's select uh, the shell and from elements, let's select nozzles. And we have N1 nozzle. N1 is a nozzle from uh, 5. So we have here N1. Okay, this one. Okay, it's uh, according to the nozzle table. It's a 3 inches uh, nozzle with a schedule 160 with a reinforced and so from here it's three inches scalable 160 we have a reinforced bed the reinforced bed width and thickness the material of the three bed here the location of uh, this nozzle and uh, the orientation 
and the service of this nozzle. So if we take a look to in one, it's an inlet nozzle. And let's click on save. Now let's add a flange to this nozzle. So from here, let's add in one flange. Define the size of this flange. It's uh, SME with a rating 150 size and screw. And let's click on save. Now, if you come back to the nozzle and click on uh, the calculator to calculate the projection. Here, if we uh, take a look, the projection of uh, of this nozzle is 800 from the vessel center line. So let's define that. So the projection of the pipe will be 108.5. So the projection value will be reflected here. Let's add another uh, nozzle, which is N2. Okay, N2 looks like N1 but with a different uh, location. So let's select N2 and make it looks like N1 and click on save. Let's add a flange for this nozzle, so N2 flange. Okay. And let's make this flange looks like F1. So from here, it looks like N1 flange and click on save. Okay. Let's come back to the nozzle N2 to, to define the uh, location and the orientation. The location of this nozzle is 2635, and the orientation will be the same. Let's click on Save. Now let's add another uh, nozzle. So we add N2 and N1. We have N6A, N6B, and N7. Okay, so let's come back here. And let's uh, select the shell. And from here, let's add in 6A and define this nozzle. Okay, it's uh, a long weld neck uh, nozzle with a raised face and uh, with a rating 300. So from here, let's select a long weld neck tile uh, with a raised face. Here, if you would like to make it with a ring joint face, from here, RTJ connection as a long weld neck. From here, let's select the schedule. The uh, size is uh, two inches. The location and the orientation on uh, zero degree and its uh, level bridle. And let's click on save. Okay, after that, we can define the projection. So the projection of uh, this model is 800. So when we click on calculate, the projection will be reflected here automatically. And let's add another nozzle, which is N67, uh, N6B, B. adding it, we can make it looks like N6A, like that. Okay, and let's add uh, N7, 7. Uh, I will show you uh, one point regarding two nozzles, uh, kindly take care uh, regarding this uh, option. If you select same as uh, option for nozzles, and let's make it looks like in uh, uh, 6A, for example, if you click add, so you will generate this nozzle looks like in 6A, it will be looks like it, but without external connection. So you can figure that uh, when you add it, looks like another nozzle, you will lose the external connection of this nozzle. So to avoid this, so let's delete it. And let's add another nozzle, which is in 7. From here, let's add 7. After adding it and getting this external connection, if you would like to add another connection to the external connection here, uh, let's select in 7 and let's make it looks like in 16. Here, let's select, uh, make a refresh for the view by selecting the external connection and select the nozzle again. And uh, let's uh, define the location and orientation of this one. So the uh, location of this nozzle will be like that and the orientation will be like that. And click on save. So in the seven, it's a pressure indicator. Uh, 
in the let's click on save. Okay, now here we have uh, all nozzles on this uh, vessel. So let's click on start us simply to proceed creating both nozzles on uh, the shell. After that, we will create the manhole with the attachments. Uh, after creating the manhole, we will check the nozzle table and the nozzle uh, load table. If you, if you would like to modify the welding styles of, of the nozzles, how we can do that, we will check that after creating uh, the manhole. Okay. Okay, now we have uh, those nozzles on uh, the shell. I think we uh, forget to uh, update the N6B location. It's uh, the same location of N6A. Okay, so they are comes over each other. So we need to define the location of with this one like that and click on save and click on start simply to modify the location of N6P. Here, that's N6P. Now, let's uh, add the manhole. So let's come back to SCG and from uh, CAN1, let's add a nozzle. So from here, let's add <coughs> M1. This manhole uh, will be a nozzle from pipe with 24 inches. So here it's 24 inches with a schedule X strong. OK, with a reinforced band. So from here, let's select the size and the schedule. The uh, reinforced band. Here is the location of uh, the manhole. And uh, the orientation will be on 90 And that way, that's the service of the nozzle. Let's click save. After that, uh, let's add flange. Let's select the type of the flange, size, rating, size, screw. And click on save. If we come back to M1 again, we can define the projection of this nozzle. So from the calculator, let's find the projection. Here's the projection of the vibe. Let's click save, and the value will be reflected here. Now let's add a gasket. So M1 gasket. And let's select that type. And a blind flange. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Yes, go ahead. I'm hearing. Yeah. So this gasket, gasket material. Hmm. How we can uh, describe the SS rings materials? We are only showing SS three one six. SS three one six, right? How as you can, can see, it? as you can see, uh, during the modif modifying of the material, you can write anything here. After that, click on save to save it. Okay, so that means part of the description, we can write it here. Again, please. What are description about me? Like uh, CS, CS inner ring, CS outer ring, or CS SSC inner ring, CS outer ring, like that. That whole description, we need to type it here. If you would like to uh, type another uh, remarks for this one, if you uh, open this 
for here. You can write any material here, like this, a, like that, for example, and select anyone. After that, add your remarks, like uh, you know, uh, material in analysis, for example, and uh, carbon steel or carbon material. Remarks. Okay. After creating on, uh, click on done. Okay. You can change the material here, like and like yeah. that, like that, and you click on on save. Okay. So if you uh, open the uh, bill of material uh, form for the gasket, if you here we have the gasket, you can find the remarks here related to the uh, the gasket. So you can export it to the bill of material. So if you would like to add the remarks, you can add it by that way. Is that your question? Yes, yes, yes. that's all. Okay, so let's come back to the blind uh, to modify the blind uh, uh, information. It's a uh, risk face blind according to so maybe 16.5, define the size, and let's make it flipped. But before making it flipped, let's uh, create this uh, assembly to show you that that's one of your uh, questions that received from your side the uh, facing of of the flange as discussed for some elements like head and flange you will find an option to flip the direction of of the element so in case of blind flange the facing of the blind flange in that case will be to the outside direction and if you would like to flip it to make it on the direction of the gasket you will need to select the flip option. Here we have this blind. And if we if you take a look here, you will find that the uh, wrist face on the uh, outside uh, direction. So we need to flip this direction of the flange. So from here, and uh, this option will reflect on all elements like stud ball to David. So the direction of the uh, element will uh, affect on the uh, other attachments. Now let's uh, add uh, let's add hand grip for example. So M1 grip from here. Let's select the type of the hand grip. You will find different types of hand grip. You can select the suitable type. So from here, let's select this type and let's make two hand grips and let's add. Uh, a stud bolt, one stud. Okay, and we need to uh, measure the required uh, length for uh, the knot spacing from here to there. That's the knot spacing. Okay, so from here, let's select the bolt and make it as a UNC one and quarter. That's the spacing and the length of the bolt. OK. And define the material of the bolt. So how, how, you, can, how you can uh, make, make this washer material? Here, washer is not available, right? Make what? Washer, washer. I don't get your point. Washer, washer. Here only stud and. Is no, 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 no washer in this type. No washer in this type of stud bolt. It's not available. It's a bolt with nuts without washer. If you would like to add an information here regarding that, you can add in remarks as we discussed, like that. You can add a, a, a remark here for the material, or or you can write it like that, uh, like that, for the nut and washer. Okay, okay, okay. You, you have many options. Okay, uh, now let's add uh, David. So you have two different types of Davids. Uh, this type of David is, is a, a solid part. Uh, all elements uh, or all parts will be one part on the bill of material, not a detailed uh, David. But if you would like to add a detailed David uh, and get uh, all elements on the bill of material like the arm, the hinge plates, uh, the eye bolt, the stub, all of that. If you would like to uh, get it on the bill of material, you will need to select the detailed manual. So here, let's add M1 
like that. Okay, and you will find some uh, different uh, specs for David. You can select uh, between them. So, uh, and uh, for uh, the hinge, a detailed hinge detail. So let's select a uh, horizontal uh, bezel with, with uh, uh, that detail. Select the rating of the flange, the size of the flange. And here, all, all data here will be related to this spec and that table of this spec. If you would like to modify something manually, uh, you will need to click on user defined dimension and that will give you the ability to define the dimensions according to this uh, image on the right hand side manually. So you can define that manually. But if you if you would like to get all dimensions as per this spec, uh, don't select user defined dimension. So this and, is David arrangement. Is it as the PAP? Again, please. David, David arrangement. What do you mean by David arrangement? PAP, PAP. PAP standard. OK, here you will find some standards. OK, and uh, those standards can be increased if you, if you would like to add another fix uh, to SEG library. As mentioned uh, before during our discussion on WhatsApp with Lipin, you can uh, send us your standards and uh, SEG development team can include it to SEG library to be able to use it anytime and uh, uh, without needing to create it outside the SEG. Sir, here uh, uh, in Aramco project, generally uh, we are using PIP standard process industry practice okay and they give a lot of a standard for you know saddle skirt band uh, lifting as well as david horizontal and vertical so uh, i think it will be a great help like if your team can include pip also in the software pip requirement so it will help lot us of, a lot a lot of, a lot of aib is, uh, uh, standards or for, for elements uh, already included in in SEG, uh, uh -huh. I will show you uh, something for the top down. Select this one for the. But we can customize it here or no? Okay. Here you will find some uh, different types of, of uh, top David. Uh, the first two types we create uh, them based on uh, European spec received from our clients in uh, Croatia. And uh, from here you will find uh, from the third type you will find the BIP uh, standard here. So you can create the top David according to BIP standard. Here with that uh, type of, uh, of uh, with a bended pipe, and another type uh, according to the VIP standard with uh, bracing pipe like that. So some of those items already included on SEG uh, library. But we recommend that if you if you would like to include something, inform us what is the type that you would like to include, and our uh, development team will uh, create it. Uh, to be available on the next release. Okay, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Here, as, as mentioned for the detailed manway, you will find uh, some text. Uh, I think I think this type according to the EIB standard. I think that, but I, I need to check that uh, this type of of, uh, of the manway for vertical or horizontal uh, opening. I think uh, this type according to the IP, I think that, but I need to check. Now let's uh, complete the, uh, yes, simply, uh, by clicking on simply to start creating the uh, manway. The first thing we will modify the uh, direction of the manway, flip the direction of the manway. That's one more thing. <laughs> yes. For this manway, if we, if we need to get the David detail drawing, you have to, uh, we have to select the detailed manual that option or from assembly option also we can get the detailed drawings. 
OK, you have uh, many ways to uh, to create that. If you would like to make the uh, detail drawing from, from SHA and keep this drawing for simply one way, I do that. And if you would like uh, to make it uh, as a um, would you mind to, to mute uh, the voice from your side because I'm hearing myself? Yeah. OK. Uh, and if you would like to make it uh, manually, you can do that. I will show you the way to make it manually if you would like to make that. And the way if you would like to make it on a separate uh, detail drawing from SEG. But that will be on the uh, drawing uh, part. Here we uh, are on the uh, 3D modeling part. Here, uh, SEG creating the detailed David, so a lot of items inside. So it takes around uh, two minutes to generate those items. So here we have seven. Like that. Okay, and if you would like to uh, flip the direction of the opening, you can flip it from here if you select and wait at it. Here you can change the opening direction from here if you select this checkbox, you will flip the direction of the opening. Okay, now let's uh, add uh, internal uh, rung on the shell. So from here, let's select elements and from internals, let's uh, select the internal trunk. Here, if you select this one, you will be able to uh, add an internal uh, rung for, uh, for that type of for vertical vessels like that, so that the root diameter, root length, and the other information here. And the location will be the uh, location of the manway uh, plus, let's say, 600 millimeters. So uh, the location of the manway uh, is plus like that. So that will be the location of the top one. And the orientation will be the same orientation of the manway. Okay, and uh, here for that one, let's make uh, the spacing between uh, them. It's here the space spacing between that one and that one. We can we can do it by using the pattern option, or if you would like, uh, make uh, each one separately. So uh, let's make it. Uh, 200, 200, 200, so. Okay, and let's click on save. And I think uh, the location, we may change it a little bit because it will be on the top direction, but let's create it first and take a section to check uh, the location of uh, the first one. Because uh, I think we need to define the, uh, that's the location, not, not that one. And the pattern will be in that direction. So let's check the 3D model first. So let's take a section, half section. Okay. So, uh, sorry. So. And. Let's create it. Okay. 
Okay, so the location for the top one, so let's make it back to that value. Which it rules, uh, okay. Like that. And if you would like to reverse the, the direction, or flip the direction of uh, this one, you can uh, click on uh, on the reverse direction uh, from this four, which is the reverse direction of the internal rung. Okay, now we have this internal rung. Let's add uh, the name blade. So let's come back to the three model here and from elements. Let's select an external attachment and let's add name blade. Okay. Here for uh, that type on uh, the drawing, let's select this type of, uh, of name blade and let's uh, define uh, the lens and uh, the width, the thickness is 12 millimeters, the projection is 15 millimeters, the material, the location of, of this name blade, 1750. The orientation of, of the name blade, let's check it here. It's on 90 degrees, so it's on 90 degrees. That's the uh, material of, of the clips, the thickness, and the uh, width, which is the width of this support blade. It's uh, equal the length of the blade, so like that. Let's add an ASME nameplate. Here's the uh, side offset. So let's of the nameplate. Here uh, we have uh, 160, 260. So the gap here is 50 millimeter. So to define the nameplate uh, bottom on offset, it's 15. And the width of the name blade here is 135, so 135. The thickness is 3 millimeters. The same here, the point offset and the gap is, check that, 200 and negative that. So the gap here is 30 millimeters. So here it's 30 millimeters and the length is 300. The thickness millimeters and let's click on save. Okay, uh, now let's run that one. You can eat the name blade. Let's remove this section. Okay, we have this nameplate like like that. And if you would like to make a modification on that, to make uh, this one before uh, before that one, you can make that uh, manually. And if you would like to uh, change it from here, because you can control the offset, this offset, which is nameplate side offset. Okay, so you can control this value, and that value you can make this uh, plate right here. And the same for the clearance here, you can move that one here. And if you would like to make it so you can change the values from here and there. But if you would like to make it uh, from auto disk inventory, you can do that if you open the name blade uh, from here. If you open this one, you will get uh, you will get this constraint. So if you delete it, for example, you can move this one top and down. The same for uh, the name plate here. If you delete the first constraint here, you can move that one top and down like that. So if you would like to modify it uh, manually, you can do it like that. So it's 10 millimeters from here. And the same from bottom here. You can modify that with 10 millimeters like that. So you modify the location of uh, both of the name blades by hand and you can control them from from here if you would like 
to control the offset. So instead of 10 millimeters, you will increase this value to get uh, that line here and the same for the other uh, new plate. Okay, now let's add a lifting lug to uh, this uh, shell. So from here, let's add a lifting lug. Uh, so uh, the, there are different types of, of lifting lugs. Uh, the suitable type for uh, our case here, but I didn't found a detail for uh, this lifting lug in, on those drawings when I checked the detailed drawing which I received from your side. I didn't found the lifting lug detail. And by the way, here I found this uh, value. It's not a correct value for the inside diameter of of the skirt, it's uh, 1,224, not 23, as bare the uh, bones. If we check this value here, uh, the skirt, uh, skirt outside diameter, we check that. Here, the skirt outside diameter, negative uh, 8, negative 8. Here, we have that's the inside diameter of the skirt. Okay, but here it's the drawing, uh, this value is not uh, correct. It's uh, 23. Okay, now let's add a lifting lug here to the shell. So from here, let's uh, add a lifting lug. So let's select the lifting lug from uh, the form and let's define the dimensions of this lifting lug. Let's start with the uh, rebad. So uh, define the length of this rebad. Let's make it like that. And the width of uh, the lifting lug, which is a dimension B. And the thickness. And the fillet, let's make it millimeters. The material of the rebad, let's make it the same shell material. And uh, the offset, which is dimension L, the offset here from the bottom of the lifting lug to the end of the rebad, let's make it 20 millimeters. The location, uh, let's make it uh, like that right now. And uh, the orientation will be on zero because the tailing lug, as I can see here on the uh, rules, the tailing lug in uh, 90 degree uh, orientation, so the lifting lug will be on zero and 180. Uh, so it will be on zero uh, degree. Here, uh, let's uh, define the uh, width of the lifting lug, uh, the offset, which is dimension B. Let's make it like that. Dimension E. If you have uh, slight uh, corners like that, you can define the uh, dimension uh, E. So let's make it 300. And the thickness of uh, the lifting lug, the radius at uh, the end here. Uh, so uh, here the radius. Uh, uh, so the diameter here will be 150, and the width of this lifting lug is uh, 200. So let's keep this value as it is. And if you would like to add a chamfer at the end, you can select this one. And if you would like to add a cut on the lifting lug, like this cut, you can select that. Uh, here, let's find that one. And if you would like to add a stiffening grip here, you can select it from here. But right now, let's uh, leave the lifting lug. Uh, after modify, uh, defining the right location of the lifting lug, we uh, let's uh, we, we can add the uh, lifting lug uh, support uh, rib. Okay, here we have uh, this lifting lug like like that, and we need to increase uh, the location value a little bit. So let's check the uh, distance from here to there. We have uh, 123, so we can make it uh, 50 millimeters only, so we can increase uh, that value. that okay and uh, click on save and let's add a stiffening grip so the width of uh, of the stiffening grip let's make it 150 or make it if you would like uh, 
to make it 200 and the uh, cut uh, or this one we could make it uh, looks like the uh, outside diameter of the vessel the thickness uh, let's make it six millimeters the offset from the whole center line which is dimension O. so let's make it keep it 100 millimeters and the draft angle we can make it two degrees and let's start simply here we modify the location of of uh, this lifting lug but as you can see uh, no no place to install the shackles and we need to modify the cut radius of this uh, clip let's measure the offset here it's sorry from here to there it's 50 millimeters okay it's okay but we need to uh, check the uh, shackle location so from here, let's open uh, the external library of SCG. And from here, let's select Crosby shackles. So let's repeat this uh, step again from new. OK, let's select on new. And from here, select SCG template library. That's the external library of SCG. And from here, let's select Crosby shackles. And let's select uh, the suitable type uh, in our workshop to, that will be used uh, to lift this equipment. And let's uh, create uh, this shackle. Before that, let's check the weight of this equipment. Let's come back here and check the weight of this equipment. It's around the three tons. OK, it's around three tons. Okay. And let's come back here. And for this shackle from the iLogic browser, let's close the iLogic browser from here. And I will show you how you can open it from the View tab. Let's select View tab. And from the windows here, you will find the, the user interface. By clicking on the user interface, you will find the iLogic browser. So when you select it, it will appear here. It will be appear like that. It's a drag and move uh, window. So you can move it to uh, set it on the side that you would like to uh, use it. So from here, you will find some tabs. You will select the forms tab and open this form. And from here, you can define the uh, the uh, weight of uh, the working load of this shackle. So let's select uh, five tons, for example. And here you have the bin diameter and uh, all dimensions of, of this shackle. Now we need to save this element. Okay. Uh, as discussed on uh, this session, here for uh, the saving the item, uh, on the uh, assembly tab, you will find some uh, options here to save the external elements. Why? Because if you try to save it from here, this button will not uh, respond. Why? Because SEG takes the control from Autodesk Inventor. So to save a new item like that, you may need to open SEG, and from the assembly tab, you will click on Save Active Document. By clicking on that one and come back to to this inventory, you will get this form. Now let's create a new folder on our project like external element. Okay, and let's make it as a part one. Now we have this shackle, and if you would like to import it here to check the. Uh, if you have enough space or not. So from here, let's import this shackle right here, right now. And from here, you can make an uh, simply for that shackle like that. You can figure that this shackle bin diameter is, uh, is too small, and you will get a clash here between the shackle and the head. That means you may need to minimize the uh, whole diameter or get a, a larger shackle. So if you need to, uh, if you would like, if the available shackle in your workshop is uh, with uh, a different weight, like let's say with 15 uh, tons, like that. So the shackle size will be changed like that. And if you click finish, 
here like that you have this shekel and you can figure that you can install a wire here to to lift but still you have a problem here with the shekel location and you may need let's uh, increase this space a little bit let's make you still have a problem here and you may need to increase the height of this lifting line. So let's come back here to SEG. And uh, from the offset, let's increase this value to make it 600 and increase the value to 400, for example. Minimize the bin hole diameter. And let's check the required bin. Let's check the diameter of, of this bin. So we may need uh, 34, for example, millimeters bore. So from here, 34. And then let's minimize this value to 60 millimeter and click on save. Now let's click run the assembly to uh, update the lifting lug dimensions. Okay, so by that way, you can. Uh, we may need to minimize it a little bit, but by that way, you can figure that you can uh, uh, modify the lifting lug uh, and uh, be sure that no clashes with the lifting shackles uh, in your result. So let's minimize this value. Okay, and uh, increase this uh, spacing a little bit, and the uh, cut diameter will be uh, the shell. Uh, the shell outside diameter. So let's check the shell uh, outside diameter. So the cut will be with that value. So here's the, the cut value, and let's click on save. Now let's run the assembly. OK, I think it's, uh, it's OK now we can we can uh, you can accept that or, or not after uh, checking the available shackles in your workshop and how you can lift it and uh, you can check the gap here for the wire it's enough space for the wire to be located on this. Area. Now, after checking the lifting lug, let's delete this shackle from uh, the assembly and now we have uh, the visual uh, assembly. One more uh, point we can do uh, it for the uh, nozzle holding. If you would like to get a holding for uh, nozzles uh, uh, automatically, here in SEG you have an option for the uh, nozzle opening. If you click on the uh, nozzle button and load uh, the nozzles in your project like that, you will get uh, all nozzles in your project including the vents and opening all that. Uh, right now, we let's remove the uh, vents and uh, openings from this list because they are not located on the shell. It, they are located on uh, unreal element. So you will get a cut uh, on a space, no cut on the skirt, and I will show you how we can make the cut on skirt. But right now, to, let's make a cut on the uh, shell and head nozzles. So we have this uh, nozzle, which is N3. It's located on uh, the bottom head. And we have those nozzles, so we, they are located on the shell. Two nozzles, N4 and N5, located on the uh, top head. Okay. Now, if you would like to make a clearance for cut, which is a uh, gap between the outside diameter of the pipe and the hole. So you can define this gap. Let's make it two millimeters and apply this gap for all nozzles. So you can figure that. The value will be reflected here on the clearance. And let's click save this setting and let's uh, click on uh, extrude process. Now SEG will uh, calculate some uh, things like uh, calculating the number of items, uh, the location of each item before proceeding with cutting. Okay, and this process may take uh, between one and two minutes. OK, but you will get after that the automatic uh, pulling uh, on uh, the shell and hit. Here. 
Yep. Now it's easy to start uh, creating the first pool. And if you check uh, the 3D model, here you can figure that it's easy to start creating uh, openings on the main elements like the bottom head and shell and the top head. Okay, after creating uh, the holes, you can figure that that's the log of the uh, orders that created on Autodesk Inventor, and here no errors in uh, the openings. Let's close this and show you one important thing. If you open this shell as a separate part, you can get all openings on, on this shell like that. Here you have the nozzle opening, and anytime if you would like to get the sheet metal development for this part, you will get it like like that. So all nozzle openings will be created here on, on this shell by that way. Okay, the same for top and the bottom head. If you open it, you will find the holes of, of the uh, nozzles. Let's for this one. Okay, to make uh, uh, the openings on the uh, skirt, we need to go to the level of the skirt. So by double clicking on the skirt and Double clicking on this element, which is the skirt uh, blade, we can make a holding on uh, for, uh, for this uh, skirt axis, for example, by selecting a sketch order from here and select the surface uh, of the uh, axis. And let's project the outside, uh, outside diameter of, of the axis and let's draw a circle and make the clearance here with two millimeters. Okay, so you will make a cut on the skirt uh, with uh, two millimeters uh, larger than the uh, skirt only. Now let's make a cut by making an extrude. Make a cut and from here, let's make it to next. So we have a cut for skirt here, but uh, you can figure that you you have a cut on the other side, so let's modify the, this feature. So from here, let's double click on that one. And from here, let's click here with defined distance. So we can make this distance with 50 millimeters and let's flip uh, the direction. So 50 millimeters like that. And let's flip the direction. So the cut will be on that direction with that value. So we can get a cut on for this uh, skirt opening. The same for the skirt, uh, skirt axis, the same for skirt opening. Let's make a new cut here. Select the outside diameter of the skirt opening. Skirt, select that one and make an offset from it. Compare that one to a construction line and make a gap like two millimeters. Click extrude cut with 50 millimeters, for example. We make a cut here. Another cut for the vents. And for the vents, we can make a batter for this cut. Let's make a project projection here. Define the offset. Convert this one to a construction line. Find that to be two, two millimeters. Click extrude. Extrude cut with 50 millimeters. And for that order, sorry, for that order, which is that one, we can make it with a pattern with 560 degrees. We can open this skirt to make the working planes as non visible. So let's select those planes from the tree and select non visible. Now we have the skirt openings and axis is done, are done. Now, if you select it and click on Read better, you can get the sheet development of the skirt. 
let's click on save. Now we have uh, the uh, shell and skirt with the opening. Now let's add some uh, other attachments to, <coughs> uh, to this vessel, <coughs> like a guiding blades to this nozzle here. We take a look to the to the detail here. We have uh, a guide blade here for for this uh, nozzle. Okay, we we need to add. Uh, we would like to add a guide blade here. So let's come back to uh, to SEG. And for here uh, we have nozzle N3, and that's the vibe of nozzle uh, N3. If you select it. And from elements, if you open the external attachments, you can find that uh, long blade. Okay, this type of attachment. So let's add uh, this type of attachment, which is uh, long blade. M3 long blade. Long blade. And uh, let's click on end. Now here, if you select uh, this one, you can add uh, a long blade for as external or uh, internal, but in our case, it's the external one. So we need to define the height. Here if we uh, take a look, it's uh, uh, um, so height 28. So 28, it's uh, 66 with 50 millimeters and 8 millimeter thickness. Okay, so the uh, that's a 50, so it's a 66 millimeter height. So let's come back to CG. So the height here is 66 millimeters. The thickness is 8 millimeters. The material of the blade. Uh, the location, uh, we can measure it, and the orientation will be on zero degree. The width is 50 millimeters, and we have three blades. Okay. So uh, uh, let's uh, check the location. We need uh, the location if we make a quick uh, drawing. So from here, let's do a quick drawing to measure the location of, of the nozzle. Here, let's. Oh, OK, sorry. We need to uh, measure it. From the center here, from here to there. So it's around uh, 53 millimeters, the start location of, of this one. So, uh, like that. And let's click on save. Now let's run the simply. Okay, now after creating it, if we take a look at that one, we have those stiffening uh, ribs. We come back to the drawing, the big drawing that we create to check. We can uh, define the location of, of this one to uh, here, that's the center, and from here. So we need to measure the distance between center and center. So we need to increase it with 10 millimeters. So the location can be like that. And let's click on save. Now let's add uh, uh, one more thing I think we need to add. Yeah. I think it's OK. OK, we need to discuss how to uh, create uh, a detail for uh, for Uncle. For anchor, for example, if you would like to add an anchor detail, uh, it's not uh, the anchor, it's the hinge for this uh, opening. Okay, uh, one more thing if you would like to uh, add uh, a rebad like that one, uh, I think I will uh, discuss with our development team to include uh, this type of reinforcing that for internal rungs 
to then kill because right now the internal run goes out uh, this attachment which is the reinforced band it's not included the reinforced band but you can create it and edit your uh, model and we will discuss how you can add uh, some external elements to your model to make it appear on the uh, material. okay now after uh, creating this i think we create it now it's okay and we didn't uh, run it did we run it or not we need to run it okay okay uh, before proceeding with uh, drawings, we uh, will check some important points regarding the nozzle welding uh, file and the nozzle loads. How we can uh, include uh, the uh, welding styles of nozzles uh, with the detail. If you open the nozzle table, here from tables, if you open the nozzle table, you will find the list of nozzles and all, all information of nozzles like uh, nozzle service, nozzle uh, size outside diameter the attached nozzle rating if you have a blind the rating of the blind flange and the facing of the blind flange the external and the internal projection all of that but here you will find the values of the weld style it's not defined it and the same for the weld style values how we can define that so let's come back to the first nozzle which is m3 okay and let's open the uh, Set weld four from here, and automatically you will find that you will get uh, uh, some options to select between uh, the single and the double V. Uh, in our case, we have a small thickness, so I think we can make it a single V and uh, or a double V. You can select between those, and you can figure that the detail number will change it like that. And for the uh, uh, clad option. Uh, the default option is, is no clad, and if you would like to add a clad to the parent element only, like that, you have a clad here and it will overlay. Uh, and if you have a clad on both sides for nozzle and uh, parent element, you can select this detail. But in our case, no uh, clad and with a single V. So we need to define the dimension A, which is the fillet between the reinforced bed and the nozzle. So let's make it eight millimeters, and between the shell and the a bad, let's make it 10 millimeters, or let's make it 10 and 10, and click on save. The same for the skirt vent, let's select the skirt vent one. If you define those values before making same as option, you will get those values defined. Here, uh, the uh, value of A, let's make it A, and let's make it 6, and save, same for it. Uh, Skirt event two. Here's the welding style. Here. Sorry.
Now, after uh, editing the values, if you open the uh, nozzle table, you will find the weld style is defined it here as a uh, NW3A as their SEG library. And here are the values of the fillet weld for nozzles which include internal and external projection or nozzles with bad or nozzles uh, weld neck nozzles, long weld neck. Okay, now one more thing regarding the uh, loads. We need to add uh, a nozzle load, let's say for uh, two inches uh, long weld neck nozzle, like in 6A. So from here, if you would like to add a nozzle load, so nozzle load, you can open this form and define uh, uh, the values per kilonewton. So it will be like that. Okay, and uh, for here, we can define the uh, moments. And click on Save. Now, if you open the uh, nozzle load table, you will find uh, those values are filled here. The same thing if you would like to add a nozzle load for, let's say, for N1, which is a three inches nozzle. So from here, you can add that like that by the same way. And let's click on save. Now, if you open the nozzle table, you will, uh, sorry, the nozzle load, nozzle load table, you will find those values. After that, after exporting to the drawing, you can add uh, other nozzles here, like uh, N2, and for here in 6B and N7 for the same size. Okay, for uh, the top head nozzles, the same thing you can do it for uh, the nozzle load. If we open that one for uh, the nozzle load, we can find the, uh, the loads like that. And click on done. And it will uh, appear here, sorry, on the nozzle table, nozzle load table, on the nozzle load table, it will appear here like that. Okay. Uh, now let's uh, create our own border. Uh, we have a sample border here. We can use it and modify on it. Okay. We have uh, this sample border. We, we will uh, use it and make some modifications on uh, the uh, title block. So let's uh, modify on uh, edit a definition for this uh, title block. So if you would like to add some uh, custom properties for this drawing, uh, let's say uh, add drawing number, for example. Now you add a new uh, parameter. If you click on end, it will appear here, which is um, that's it. If you select it from the custom properties, you can modify the value like like that. And if you click on modify or enter, it will be stored here on the custom properties. So how we can reflect this value here? For example, we need to add this value here inside this one, for example. So how we can do that? Here from from uh, this text, we will select a custom property okay, of the drawing. And from here, you will, uh, you will find the list of the uh, custom properties that you have. We will select a number drawing and click on insert. Now we have this one. And you can control the size of the font and the type of the font. If you click on OK, now the YAD uh, item number will be reflected here. Yeah. I think we make a bridge here, this 500, sorry. 
So I make it one times only like that. That says a stitch. Okay, and now we have this GN item number. If you click on save on the border, you will get the number here. Okay, uh, we can uh, add uh, or create uh, a form to define the uh, dimensions or uh, the uh, parameters of, of this uh, vessel. Like, for example, for example, if you would like to modify those values, so we have here uh, uh, some parameters. Uh, those are the custom parameters. So if you would like to modify it like that, you can modify it directly from this form and it will be uh, reflected here. The same for that one. You can make a link between that. How we can make a form like this uh, to add the parameters uh, of the custom one? So from here, you can add on the iLogic browser. As we discussed, you can add. Hi, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, I would request, uh, can we have almost a you know, 10 minutes break, tea break? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when you want, Mr. Uh, Sandeep, when you do, when do you want to take the break, sir? Oh, no, we, like, yeah, uh, uh, once we do the modeling, I think modeling part already we completed. Now we are shifting to the detail part. So we can have a break now and at 10.30 we can gather it again. Uh, the back, uh, we are recording, still recording, or do you cancel? The back, we still recording the session before starting? Hello? Yes, it's a record, okay. Okay, how to, uh, uh, sorry. Okay, how to uh, create uh, or open, uh, as we discussed, how we can open the uh, iLogic browser. So from, uh, oh, I can write this. One. Okay, so from view tab, uh, let's uh, open the user interface and from user interface, we will open the iLogic browser. So it will appear here. To add a form to give you the ability to change directly uh, without opening the custom, uh, custom properties of the item. So from here, let's add a new form. And from the form, you can define it as uh, drawing information and drawing data, for example. And from here, from the uh, I uh, properties, uh, you can get the uh, custom properties that you that you have from the I properties, and you can import uh, the information here on this list. And if you would like to make uh, a group, for example, for uh, the visual data, like like that, you can uh, you can import the visual name, visual tag inside this. Group. By that way, you can arrange your own uh, form, which gives you the ability to change the values uh, easily. Okay, and inside this uh, iLogic uh, form, you can change the style of, of the form. Let's make it uh, blue, like, like that. You can change the font size, so you can change all the font, make it bold, for example. Let's make it old so you can figure that. You can make it without none button here, without any buttons like that. So a lot of options here, but it's uh, related to the uh, biologic uh, uh, order. So from here, you can define directly if you have your own form. So you can modify the values directly from, from the form. Now let's uh, save this uh, form and use it inside this EG as the reference uh, drawing. Okay, so let's save this one. And uh, from SEG, let's uh, go to the uh, simply uh, the uh, edit uh, setting tab and open the custom drawing. And from the custom drawing, let's import uh, our reference drawing, which is uh, Aramco, this uh, template. And from here, let's define the, uh, give it a name, which is ref drawing. 
That's our reference rule. And from here, let's define the border gap from here, from top and bottom uh, in, in, in centimeter. So if we check this, those values, so let's open the uh, drawing again. So let's open that one. And for the border, let's check the border. Is it here? That's the gap, which is 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. So from here, we, we can define this gap as a one centimeter, one centimeter. And for the border, for the title block, we need to define the width and the height. So if we uh, come here and edit the uh, title block, here that's the height of the title block and here the width. So we can define it here. That's the height in 4.8 in centimeters. 4.7 in centimeters. Okay, now let's click on Unbend to include uh, this reference drawing here on the list. After that, you can select Set as Default, and after uh, you will get this checkbox. That means this drawing will be used as a reference drawing. Now let's close this one. Here, let's select uh, the equipment, and let's click right-click on the drawing and let's uh, select create drawing from here let's select the size a1 and here you will find the size of the drawing in millimeter height and width from the active views let's select one uh, view only and uh, let's make the top view uh, on the drawing uh, by hand to move it uh, and change the scale of flexibility so here let's add one a view only and on the third tab, we will define the uh, orientation of the elevation view. Here, we select the elevation view. So the elevation view appearance on the drawing, uh, we need to define it uh, regarding those options. So if we if we uh, take a look, so let's close this. Okay, here, if you take a look to the visual, here that's, uh, as we discussed, if you take a look from the top view, here that's a zero degree. 90 degree as bare as this, as we discussed here. For the vertical bezels, if you uh, get the top view as a flip, flip the text, you, you will get 0 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree, like that. So that's the 0 degree. If we would like to look to this bezel on the, uh, on the drawing, we will uh, make a, a look, the elevation view, as a back view. Here, so if we come back here, we select the back view. So that will be the elevation view here. That's the elevation view. The elevation view will look at it from the back view. So that will be the elevation view on the draw. OK, so here that's back view. And from here, let's define the uh, location and uh, uh, location of the view. And here that's the scale of, of this bezel. And from here, let's add the bill of material design data table. And let's add the nozzle table and the maximum allowable uh, nozzle load. OK, uh, let's add nodes. And from nodes, you can import uh, an Excel sheet. So from here, let's select uh, import from Excel. And let's select the general nodes in Excel format. And do you want to delete all the nodes? Let's click on yes. Now we have now we have uh, the notes received from the uh, sorry I think we need to uh, check the Excel sheet first here uh, that's the template let's open the general notes okay here to get uh, to get it in the right way you need to delete the uh, first row. So we will lead that row by that way. So you have now this, uh, those nodes like that. And now let's save this one and let's import it. So here, here are the nodes we can give it only in one line. Yes, one yes. column. Only one, one, one line because sometimes for each one, one node we can sub node also ABC like that. So how we can add that one? Okay, if you take a look to that one here. We have 
some nodes like that, and you have A and B, you can write it by that way. And if you would like to make it as a text as a drawing, and I will show you how you can make it as a text. Would you mind to make mute the voice? Okay, now let's go. Now we have the uh, general notes here after importing. Okay, let's close this. And from the welding styles, let's uh, select the required welding styles uh, for that. Let's select this one. We have a nozzle with internal and external projection for the uh, for the skirt and skirt axis. So we have this detail. And a skirt uh, will the connection and some other attachments like the bracket of the uh, uh, nameplate. Now let's click, click save and let's add client and document list. Here you can add a uh, client document list, like if you received, for example, a uh, process sheet. And that's the document number. For example, let's add it. So you have uh, a list of documents. If you would like to edit, just select the row and click on edit to modify the row. And the visual document list, like mechanical calculation. Let's edit. So you have this list here. Click on cancel. Now let's add a revision table. So uh, let's give a name for this drawing. General arrangement drawing. Here for the revision table, we will not fill it because we already have. Uh, one uh, for uh, inside the template. Okay, we already have a one, and that one will we fill it uh, manually. Okay, so let's do this. Here, that's the revision table of SEG. If you would like to fill it and use it in your project, you can fill it. Here, uh, let's check the design style. Here in this drawing, we will separate uh, the general arrangement drawing in two sheets. Okay, we will add the general notes and the bill of material and the uh, nozzle load detail on a separate sheet, sheet two of two. And the sheet one of two, we will add the uh, design data and uh, equipment views, nozzle table, and some other. Uh, so from here, let's select the design tool. In design tool, that means we have two sheets. And let's select the size of the second sheet. And from here, let's add the uh, documents that we will include it on the uh, second sheet. From here, let's uh, include the visual document list for the second sheet. The same for the client document list. The bill of material, we will uh, move it to the second sheet. And the notes. The other tables, we will keep them. Uh, let's move the nozzle, uh, nozzle load to the second sheet and let's click on save. Now we have some uh, tables will be exported to the second sheet and some other will be on the first sheet. Now let's click on uh, create drawing. Here that's the uh, first sheet. That's a SEG revision table, and we will move it down because we will not use it.
the bill of material table. So here these tables are not single come. So is there any option to change the sub, uh, some case if we need to change the text size? Can we change? Again, please yeah. change what? Text size in this sheet. Change what again? Text size, text size. Text size? Yeah, suppose yes, in this table. Yes, control that from the setting of the, of the drawing itself. No, in this table, in this, suppose in this table, in heading, we need to give bigger size or not, we need to increase the size. So how to change that one? As mentioned from the drawing, I will show you after after finishing this. Yes, Okay, after finishing that, we will need to uh, rearrange those tables. Okay, that's the uh, first sheet, the building details will come up with a drawing. Okay, now after finishing that, we will uh, move uh, the revision table, or the SEG revision table to outside of the drawing here. Now we have the design data table, the nozzle table. And for the second sheet, if we extend this form a little bit, that's the second sheet. We have the notes table, we can move it a little bit from here to there. Okay, and we will need to remove uh, the revision table, the second revision table on this drawing outside here. So let's select. So we need to rearrange the tables to suit our uh, requirements and the uh, here, such the bill of material table. And let's move the client document list and the document list up here. Move that one. Sorry. Okay. Uh, if you would like to uh, import the uh, the data of of the uh, general notes directly to the Excel sheet, or you you can take it copy paste to avoid. Uh, so let's let's delete those because it's a, it's a huge uh, data. We can uh, remove them right now. Okay, to light dealing with the uh, table. Sheet of, of the templates. So let's uh, get it from here. So it's general notes. Okay. Paste. So it's 
session is still open here. Let's close it from here. Try again. If we open it, you can take the values copy and paste to the uh, table. So if you copy that like that and come back to the drawing here, if you open that one, if you insert some other cells like that, you can just copy and paste like that and click on save. So you will get the general notes on by that way. Okay, so how we can change the font size here? Let's uh, remove the first row here. Let's open that one and remove the title to be like that. And uh, to change the size from the uh, manage setting, you will open the style editor. And from the style editor, uh, we can select the texts here, and you can add uh, the required text. <clears throat> like, let's add uh, a new text style for uh, table title or table data, and let's make a copy from it. So let's make a new one, table data two. Okay, like that. So we have a new font here called table data 2. So you can define the size of this font to 1.5, like that, and click on save. Now we have this font. We can use it uh, in any place here on the drawing. So in, uh, inside the uh, tables, if we select uh, the tables and for the uh, notes table, for example, here, you can select the table uh, data and select that style for uh, the notes, for example. Okay, and if you click save, we need to update that on the uh, table itself. So let's select this table and refer it again to the notes table, like that, and modify the length and width. So from here, sorry. To find that the width of this column. So the font here will be 1.5 after a changing. Okay, here it's 2, here it's 1.5. Okay, so by that way, you can define the size of the font. Create your own font. After that, select uh, select the table that you will need, that you need to refer this font inside it. Okay. Uh, let's come back here. Now, if we, if you would like to add uh, some dimensions, so let's add the center lines to uh, those nozzles to define the location of each one. Those are the center lines. Let's select this type of center line. Okay. Let's add the turn line. Add the bottom head, the same for the top head.
Okay, now if you select this type of dimension, which is uh, ordinate type, you can define the original uh, for the datum line here. So that's the reference line. If you select one of those nodes like that and click on create uh, dimension, you will get that value by, by that way. Okay, to control the uh, style of the dimension, this drawing is already uh, pre prepared. So, if you would like to control the uh, style of this dimension from the style editor, Okay, if you select the dimensions here, you can select the main unit and the alternative unit from here. And you can control the uh, fraction value and the leading value like that. So in that case, for example, we have the millimeter at the, uh, at the beginning after that, the uh, the uh, value in uh, in foot but we need to to uh, flip that or change that so from here let's uh, make it on foot and from here let's leading zero that means if you have a zero value here it will be removed so the value will appear in inches directly if you have zero foot value it will appear in inches directly by removing the leading zero and from here, <clears throat> let's select the fraction and select the fraction value. Okay. <clears throat> For the uh, alternative unit, we will make it in millimeter. And the precision will be in two. And let's remove the leading zero here. You can select the format of the dimension. The uh, main value will be between brackets or the uh, second or alternative value will be between brackets. So we will select that one. And by the same way, you can make it with the uh, other values. So the alternative value will be okay. so remove that and the precision will be two. And the main value will be four. Fraction value 32. Okay, and remove this and let's modify it on that one. Four. Like that. OK, now you can save that and you can export that as a style. You can use it anytime. How if you uh, come here and click on let's save that first, you can export this standard style from here. So you can export this style and you can import it anytime if you if you need it. Like here in this style, you change the text size, uh, arrow size, dimension size the colors, you change all of that. So you can keep this style by exporting it. And if you need it, anytime you can import it. Here, for example, we have an uh, already created one. So we can import it. So let's come here to the... Uh, so we have this style, which is already created. We can import it and click on Save. OK, now if we select those dimensions, and import it to that one automatically you can figure that the foot value or the uh, imperial value will be appear on the front after that the millimeter value will be like that uh, and you have a pre, uh, prefix value which is positive elevation and if you have a value for the uh, Good value, it will appear here. If not, uh, it will not appear. Okay, now let's add another uh, revisions for the other model. Why that way, like that? Okay, let's add one for the lifting lug, and for the other side, let's select the orientation. Click here. 
that's the elevation for this one and that one here that's the elevation for those and let's add another elevation for the uh, this one and let's add it for here let's get one So the elevation for each one. We need to make this uh, data is invisible. If you select any dimension, you will find here an option for hide origin indicator. So you can hide this indicator here. And you would like to make those values with positive elevation. So let's select those dimensions like that. And make them with a positive direction. And that one, the same that one. With a positive direction. Yes. And those will be with a negative direction. So let's select them like that and select negative direction. So we have the location for those with a negative direction. Now let's add the balloon for nozzles. So from here, let's select the balloon. And from here, let's select nozzle tag number. Okay. And let's select parts only from this list, not structure. You will select the parts only. And from here, you will get the notification of this nozzle. So we can move it right here. By clicking on control, you can uh, the control from the keyboard. If you here, if you would like to make it horizontal, just click on control. That will keep it horizontal, not like that. So click on control, and now you can add it like that. Now let's add ballon tag for those nozzles. In two. And sometimes you have a chance to select the nozzle itself. Only select the uh, from the view, for example, if you have uh, a nozzle. Uh, like that, but in that view on zero degree, and you cannot select this as a very bad or the bite. Uh, if you select the flange itself like that, you will get this balloon, which is in the two flanges, the name of this node on the tree, because you are selecting this flange. How to how to uh, adopt that by selecting a nozzle? If you right click on this one and select attach a balloon, you can select <coughs> the main element that you would like to include for that you will remove that balloon. The same thing we will do it with the other elements like the lifting lug here. We have this lifting lug. So by clicking on control you can make this line a horizontal line like that. The same for the manway. I mean here if you select for example the blind flange it will appear be sure that you select nozzle tag it will appear M1 blind. So if you want to select the nozzle itself, like that, and remove the balloon. Okay, now let's select, let's add some balloons for the uh, skirt axis and skirt end. And here, as we said, if, you, if, you, if we get this balloon for the flange and you would like to get the nozzle, from right click and select the touch balloon, select the nozzle, it will be appear here. After that, you can remove the balloon of the flange. Okay, now let's add the elevation for this one. It will be like that. And let's add it with a negative value. So we have the location like that. Now let's add some dimensions for this is skirt. Here we have the height of skirt, and that's the blade length, the thickness of the base blade. Okay, it's as a straight flange. Move that one, and you can make it a text like that and straight flange. Just add this value. 
like that. And be sure that uh, you make the automated values from Autodesk Inventor activated. Don't remove it, because any change will be reflected here on those values. Let's add the can here. So that I can yes. To see. Okay, and here we have the straight flange of that one. You can make a copy property. So by clicking on that one and the copy property, if you make here a copy property, you will get a straight flange value. Now let's define the projection of nozzles. So here, that's the projection of the nozzle, and it's from the town line with that value. Find the spacing between nozzles and it as the nozzle tag. Now we have the spacing from here to there like that. And now let's add, as you can see, in that case, for example, you, you cannot select the nozzle, for example, but if you select the flange itself, no problem with that. You can add the balance like that right now. After that, you can select the element and remove the previous ah, like that by that way okay here we have uh, the main dimensions of the vessel we need to define the uh, inside diameter of this vessel we have this inside diameter so we need to define that like ig equals like that and the thickness of the shell. Like that. OK, uh, let's add some uh, text to, to this uh, visual like seam line, uh, circumference line, longitudinal welding line <coughs> to uh, this view. And uh, uh, bef before that, let's add the center of gravity of this vessel. Here, if you select this vessel from uh, this view and right click on and select the find in browser, you can figure that it will appear here on the tree. And that's uh, the assembly of the vessel. If you select it, you, you can figure that the color of lines change it to green. Here, if you right click and select the center of gravity, okay, here you will, you will get the center of gravity of this vessel appear in this side. And you can add the center of gravity of this vessel uh, as uh, you have here some um, blocks, rebuild blocks on the buoy. So you can import it from here. We get to the center of gravity and see this one. So here, that's the center of gravity, the real center of gravity. Uh, it's a real one, it's more accurate than the uh, uh, calculation software like BVL or Compress. Because it includes the uh, opening of uh, of nozzles on the shell, the same on the head, so you will get the accurate center of gravity of. Uh, now let's add uh, uh, the location of this center of gravity and make add a text as a application. Application. G at the fabrication. Okay. Uh, now let's add the uh, define the data line, the circumference, longitudinal building line. We will select this view and click on uh, sketch here. Okay, or S from the keyboard. Now you you are on the uh, level detail of the equipment. So from here, let's add data line. Like that, so we have the data line here, and the, let's add the seam line one, and we can take a copy from that text up here and modify that one copy circumference seam line two, and the, let's add another one. 
and you can, you could take a copy from that one here to there and rotate it counterclockwise to be like that and modify it and you can see line one and take a copy from it to the skirt so here we have <clears throat> a longitudinal seam line at the skirt at zero degree and modify this view like that okay now we have this view i think with uh, complete detail we may miss some things but i think uh, right now it's include uh, most dimensions let's add the skirt inside diameter so from here let's add this diameter move this a little bit here and the uh, pre, uh, base ring inside diameter here and the base ring body so we can define that as text so base ring id okay and that's the skirt id okay just As you configure the value of the dimension, you will find it like that. Okay, so don't don't uh, mess with this value because it automatically changes if you make any change on the 3D model. Let's edit this text, which is based ring OD. Okay, now let's make uh, two other views to define the orientation of nozzles. Okay, the first view uh, will be for, uh, sorry, we will make a project view from this vessel right here. Okay, and to move it uh, on this side here, if you try to move it, it will be uh, all the time perpendicular to the center line of the vessel. So we need to break the, this aligning. So you will click on this uh, view, right click, and from a line, you will break this align, and you will get this uh, view here to show you that uh, the bottom view is from B to B. And let's move this view here. Okay, now we have this view. If you would like to increase the scale of this view, let's double click on that one and uh, re remove the break the uh, scale link here and define the scale as you would like so we will make it one to ten so we have this scale like that and if you would like to make it with visible lines you can do that by double clicking on the view and break the link here if you would like to make it with visible lines like that so no hidden lines so you can control the view of this one another view we will make it for a uh, section view so let's take a section view. Let's select this view and select section view. And let's make a section on that level here. Click on continue. And make it down here on the visit. And let's increase this uh, line a little bit here to cover the nozzle. So the nozzle will, will appear on, this, on, the, on that side. And the same for that side to cover the uh, tailing plug. We can move it up a little bit if, if you would like to move it up. And you can edit the sketch if you would like. So we can remove this link and you can move this line up or down like, like that. So we move it, move it up a little bit like that. So we have this view. You can move those texts here to the side. And now we have this view. And the same thing, this view is linked to the above view. So we can break this link like that and move that view here below that one and control the scale to make it one to 10, like the top view and make them aligned. So we can align them vertical. So if that view moved like that, the bottom one will be moved with them like that. Okay, now let's uh, add uh, an north direction to one of those views and add the bold circle diameter and the uh, skirt detail options. As you can see here, 
regarding the section, we have a cut on the head. If you would like to remove to, re to remove this cut uh, from the view, if you would like, let's discuss how we can do that. Uh, from here, let's get this view on the tree by clicking on Find in Browser. Now you, you get this uh, view from here. Now you have this assembly of the visit. And you can find that you have the bottom head. You can figure that the color of the uh, lines get to red color because I'm selecting here the bottom head. So if you select it from here and uh, make it completely invisible like that, so it will be removed from this view. Okay, so by that way you can make things invisible. But here let's make the hidden lines appear. So let's select hidden lines. So the uh, the rips will appear on this view. Now let's uh, add the uh, nozzle, some nozzle tags here. So from here, from annotation, let's select the center line. Now we have uh, the center line here. And for the bottom view, we can select those holes by that way, like that. And let's define the bolt circle diameter. Okay, so from here, let's make it bolt circle diameter. Like that. And let's add uh, nozzle tags to this uh, view. So from here, let's select this nozzle and select. Click on Control to make it uh, vertical. Let's add the main uh, nozzles here. Let's add M1. After that, we will add the other attachments. But at the beginning, let's select one balloon only. After that, we will uh, add another balloon to it. And from here, let's select another nozzle, like that one. Okay. So from here on the uh, zero degree, if we uh, take a look to the simply, to close this uh, test drawing. Okay, here at uh, zero degree uh, from the front view, here that's zero degree. We have nozzle N6A and N6B here, and you can check that from the uh, nozzle table orientation. If we open the nozzle table orientation from the orientation uh, balloon. You can figure that the orientation of nozzle uh, N6A and 6B will add zero degree. So here we have N6A, so we need to uh, add N6B here. So we, we can add it like that and modify it from here like that. Or you can add it from the list, attach a balloon from uh, the list. So if you if you uh, are knowing the number of, of, of this element, you can import it directly from here. So how we can how we can know that uh, uh, here from from this from uh, this balloon you can attach uh, other balloons like like by that way and for example here we have the manway and we have a name blade here and tailing blood so how we and the axis so by selecting it like that and attaching balloon you can add the name blade and attach another balloon. That's the tailing, the skirt, the tailing lug of the skirt. And here we let's add the uh, skirt axis one. So for the skirt, we can define the name of that one as tailing lug. Be like that. And if you would like to add a balloon for uh, top nozzles, by that way, like 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 that here or there. Continue and for this nozzle and four and you can modify that value to make it a top by, by that way top and the one at top okay for for this one we have a lifting lug here uh, for the skirt axis and the skirt opening let's define the orientation of the bottom view uh, here on uh, here we have uh, nozzles on uh, 270 degrees. We have three nozzles here. 
we have n1, n2, and n7. So let's come back here. We have n2. So let's add another attachment like that. N1, N2, and N7. We can make it like that. Okay, and now let's have the orientation on the top view. So let's add here 0 degree. Okay. Let's adjust the text. Okay. Now let's come uh, at the bottom view and let's add the uh, north direction. You you have some uh, pre-built uh, blocks. You can select from them. That's one for the uh, direct north direction and one like that. If you would like to make a rotate for that one by double clicking on it, okay, you will get a scale for that one. If you would like to increase the scale, for example, if you would like to change the orientation to 20 degree, for example, you can make it like that. So you can control the uh, those blocks uh, by double clicking on them to get the, uh, to control the scale and orientation for those blocks. Okay, here now let's uh, add the, uh, the orientation of the uh, of the uh, support ribs. Okay, and here let's make it typical. Sorry, not not on that one here. Okay, and from here let's add some center lines for the scared events like that and let's select balance and from here let's define the scared events like that And here with this, this skirt event, we have a uh, grounding lug. So by attaching a balloon, we can get the grounding lug. Select balloon and select nozzle tag. Again, from here, select this one like that. And nozzle in three. Skirt. And here we have an skirt axis. So from here, let's select N3 and select skirt axis. All orientations appear here on this table. So each nozzle orientation will appear. So if you would like to remove some of those columns, we will discuss how we can uh, remove it. Okay, now we have uh, the uh, orientation view. We will need to adjust the uh, orientation here. So let's add zero degree. Forty five degree. You know, it's 
adjust the uh, the location of the text. And here we, we need to add a balloon for the skirt axis and the tailing one. It's okay here. It's Uh, now let's add a balloon for the skirt axis. Select all the balloon and select the skirt and modify this value to be a tailing lug because a tailing lug is a part of the skirt. If it's a separate part, it will take the node name. Here it's tailing. Now we have uh, that by that way. Okay, now let's add some annotations here on uh, the main bezel, like the uh, part uh, tag, for, for example, for this head. It's an ellipsoidal head inside the diameter 1,219, nominal thickness 12, uh, minimum thickness of performing is 1.5, and stay flat. So, one more thing we need to discuss regarding the balloon, regarding uh, the bill of material item number. Here, uh, if we open the second sheet, let's uh, remind that. And then let's open the second sheet. Here, each item takes an item number. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if you would like to reflect this number on the drawing, if we, for example, if we open the balloon and select item number on bill of material and select that one. You can figure that this balloon will be empty, not, not include any value. So how we can fill this value with the same value uh, in the bill of material? Okay, so to fill this value with, with the, sorry, with the same number here, how to do that? I, I will uh, uh, define this, uh, beginning from the bill of material. Here in the bill of material of uh, SEG, SEG start calculating the bill of material by selecting the identical items, uh, which they have the same material, same description, same weight, okay, and accumulate them. For example, here for this flange, which takes item number five, we have three items. The quantity is three here. Uh, we have three flanges. They have the same description. They are two inches, two uh, NBS2 with a weld neck as a weld neck flange with a rest face, the same class, same schedule, and the same material, the same weight. So it's easy to accumulate the uh, identical items and give them the same item number. Okay, so to reflect this item number to the model, we need to make one more step, which is here we have this model. We need to reflect the item number, for example, for this flange, this flange, and uh, maybe another uh, flange here. Maybe one at top here. Uh, so those are identical. And for those flanges, that one, that one, and that one, they are the same. Okay. So how to reflect the item number to those items? Here in SEG software, for, on the assembly tab, you will find a button called update item number. When you click on this button, SEG will start updating the elements and uh, reflect the item number uh, to the elements. Uh, this process takes around between two and three seconds for each element. So uh, it depends on the number of uh, the elements in your model. Okay, so it may take uh, one minute, two minutes. So it depends on the uh, model that you have. Still uh, proceeding with the dating. We will wait until finishing.
Now we see G complete this process. So if we come back to the drawing, let's open the drawing. And let's open the uh, test sheet. You will figure that the uh, balloon on of the item number now filled with the value. For example, here we have item number three. If we check the bill of material, item number three is a shelf course. Here's the description of this element and the material. Here, the weight of, of this element. The same for item number two, or let's check another item, like that elbow. Here we have an elbow here. Item number nine. So if we come back to the block material here, item number nine is an elbow. Okay, it's NBS two, schedule one hundred and sixty ninety degree radius, long radius according to S one is sixteen point nine. Okay. Now one uh, one more thing we need to do uh, for the uh, welding styles. And if you would like to add a welding style uh, here to this detail, for the uh, longitudinal welding line style, here we have some pre-built blocks as we discussed for the uh, nozzles. So it's with the style number one, W1, W2. For example, like that. And you would like to mention uh, those welding lines on uh, the draw. So for the longitudinal welding line, it's uh, welder style number two. So from here, let's select welder style number two. And let's select this one. Okay, and you can figure that it's rotated uh, 45 degrees, a default value, a 20 degree default value here. So let's make a move. And from here, let's make a lead and make the scale with zero. And the rotation is uh, one. And from here, let's select it like that. And for uh, top and the bottom seam line, it's Will the line style one? So from here, let's select this style. Here, for example, uh, for the skirt style, let's make it uh, style number four. Remember. Here, so from here, let's select will the style number four. It will be for the skirt with head, like that. And style number two for the seam line of the skirt. Okay, so by that way we can add uh, the weld well, styles and you can add your uh, your blocks here uh, on uh, this drawing and you can use it uh, anytime. Okay, let's go back to the next sheet. Now we, I think we finished the first sheet. Let's go to the next sheet. Here we have this bill of material, and here we have the maximum uh, allowable nozzle width. We need to make a modification here for that one. Let's add N2 here. A, N7, or one N4, N5, and N3. Exactly. And let's add some blocks for the uh, nozzle load. So from here, let's uh, add a nozzle load on on uh, head, nozzle load on tail, head, like that. And if you would like to add them inside a border, we can do that by that way. So we can move that border here and move. You can control the width of the cells. If you would like to minimize the width here, column width, so we can move it like that. So you can change the length and the width of 
of the corners so still change the height so you have the ability to make it changes on, on that let's add a foundation load for a vertical prism so from here let's add a foundation load for the vertical visit okay and let's add a table load the columns and four cells and let's make it on the foundation fix it foundation here let's remove the header and the title from here and let's get the values from the excel sheet that we have that the foundation loop calculation excel sheet here we will get those values copy and paste so we select it. copy and paste now let's modify the width of the cells. Okay, now we have this table, here, so we can move it here. Now we have the foundation load on the table by that way, and we can modify or if we have a list of visual uh, document list or client document list, we can increase it or copy and this directly from the Excel sheet. Now let's add a 3D view for uh, this equipment here on that view, like that. Change the scale. Okay, and make it with color, like that. Now let's add uh, balloons or a bill of material balloons. Let's increase the uh, scale a few. Okay, so from annotation, let's select the balance and select bill of material item. And from here, you can add the balloon of each element to the bill of material like that for this lifting glove or this one for the name blade. And if you would like to add uh, add balloons beside each other like that, you can make it by using touch balloon by that way. Scale to end. Okay, now uh, after creating uh, this visit, let's say it's revision zero. And the client asked us to add some other attachment to this visit, like adding a cover for, for, uh, for this access. Okay, and this type of cover not included in SEC library. Okay, as we can see here, this type of cover not included in SEC library. So how we can, Create something like that and add it to the 3D model, and uh, the same to the uh, bill of material of SEG to convert it to the final bill of material uh, uh, on the drawing. Okay, so let's save this drawing up to now, and let's come back to the uh, 3D model here, and let's. Uh, discuss how we can uh, create that. You have many different ways you can select between them. The first one by making uh, a sketch on the uh, drawing, like like that way. If you come uh, to the general arrangement of drawing here, like that, you can make a sketch like that and like working on AutoCAD, make uh, make a cover like that. By that way, define the dimensions and uh, define the uh, the bill of material of, of those items uh, manually here on the bill of material. Okay, by adding them like that. If you would like to add some empty rows, by that way, and define the number all of them. 
But we don't recommend that because uh, the changes will not be uh, automated or reflected from SEG to uh, Autodesk Inventor. And it will not appear on the 3D model. If you have a 3D model like that, you will not have a, a cover here. So how we can deal with that by creating the item on Autodesk Inventor? Some cases like this, you, you may need to, um, to include um, or add some items to the, your 3D model. Uh, let's create a new part. So from here, let's create a standard part, for example. And this standard part will be uh, will be a, a cover uh, blade. Let's make it as as a one part, okay? And the, by the same way, you can carry the other parts. But let's create uh, a part with this diameter. We have the outside diameter here, five two four. So let's. Draw a circle. Okay. And let's increase it by, let's say, 12 millimeters, 6 millimeters in each side. Click finish and give it a thickness. Let's give it thickness with 6 millimeters. Okay. And so from the other side, let's Okay, so that will be five millimeters. Okay, let's make extrude. Sorry, let's make another circle. Let's project, project this circle and make extrude for for this one with let's say thirty millimeters. So we have this cover like that. Okay, and you can make a clips on side, and you can make a hand grip. Or that, or you can get hand grip from uh, the SEG uh, external library. But right now, let's add this part. Let's change the material of this part to steel to get a correct weight for this one. Okay, and let's save this part. Okay, so to save it as discussed, it will not be saved from here. You should go to the assembly tab and click on save document. Around the document to get this one. So, insert. Just like that. Over. Now, uh, let's add this cover to the final assembly. So, from here, let's open the, this one. And from place component, let's include this axis. So, from here, we have this cover like that so let's include this cover from here to there now we have this cover on the uh, skirt axis by that way if you open the 3d model or the drawing of, of this equipment you can figure that this cover is reflected here and the same <clears throat> on uh, the uh, 3d model of the detail it's reflected here Okay, so let's move this balloon to this side. And if you create a bill of material balloon to this cover, you can figure that it's empty, okay? Because it's not, it takes a number yet. Now the last number here is 49. So we can uh, give this number as on the title. We can give them an item number as a 50. So when you come back here to the drawing, To the drawing, you will get this balloon filled with 50. Okay. So how to reflect it on the bill of material here? As discussed, if you if you uh, just typing type it here, you will lose it if you try to update your drawing because this value will not be included in SEG. So to include it in SEG, we we will open the uh, bill of material uh, for like that. And from the uh, external uh, 
uh, bill of material, we will include an item. But the first step you should do after opening this form is select the vision. You should select this point, this node, because if you have uh, more than one vision, you should define this item related to each vision. So from here, let's select the vision and define the item number, it's 50. The quantity, we have one. The description is a cover, uh, care to access cover. Okay, the technical characteristics is eight, forty equals, let's say, uh, I'm sorry, that material. Minimized weight, we can get the weight from here, so uh, the accurate weight. So from the physical properties of this item, you can get the uh, weight of this item. It's around uh, 12.6 kilograms. So let's come back here, 12.6 kilograms. Part name, scared access cover. And let's give the same part number and click on save and only. Now this item is stored on this EG file. So if you would like to edit on it, just select it from the tree and update and see. Now, if you close this form, it will appear here on the bill of material. Here, that's the scared access, that's the description, and all of that. So, how we to reflect that to the uh, bill of material after creating this item? We need to, we still need to update this on the bill of material. And if you come back to SEG and from the drawing part, let's click on create drawing. And from tables, let's remove all of those tables, all of those checkboxes, but keep Bill of material table is selected, and from here select update tables automatically. Okay, that uh, checkbox will loop on the selected tables and update them. Okay, uh, we don't have any updates on the other table, so we don't uh, need to lose time uh, during updating those tables. So just we have one table to update, so let's select it and select update tables automatically. If you click on create drawing. the bill of material will be uh, updated. Okay, here after updating the bill of material, you can figure that the uh, last item, which is a scared access cover, is coming. Uh, you can uh, modify on this bill of material by modifying the uh, width of the wall. It's just for uh, up to you if you would like to uh, make some changes with the uh, format, uh, like making uh, the alignment of, of those lines in that side, like that. So you can make some adjustment for the final uh, review of, of the bill of material. Like that. One more point regarding the general notes. If you would like to add uh, general notes as a text, you can make it like that here in the lines. Let's open the Excel sheet. Sorry, not the design button. Here we have this general notes, so let's select those, for example.
Okay. This. Okay, for example, if you would like to make something like that here, you have two nodes or three nodes. You can make them by that way, like that. And for that, you can make spaces by that way. So you can write a general node control the size of, of that one, like that. You can move, click on OK. So if you have a Word file, you can take it directly to the nodes. But you should take care about uh, here. For example, if you would like to adjust the width, you can control it like that, and automatically it will be adjusted here. Okay, that's another way to uh, add nodes to uh, the uh, to your drawing by using a text instead of, of tables. So you can import the values uh, by that way if you have in the same text. Uh, sometimes you may need to separate those nodes uh, in, uh, in separate uh, texts to make it light, because if you have a large text that uh, during editing, it will take a time. So you can separate uh, the text by, by that way, and you can make, uh, for example, we take a copy from, from that one, take a list like that. You can make uh, a line for uh, those texts by that way. So if you have a line, you can make a, a line by that way. You can make uh, like that. So you can adjust the text to, to make them in a vertical way. So it's better to uh, split. The general notes, uh, if you would like to make it in text, uh, to avoid uh, time loading during editing. Okay, uh, now we have uh, the general arrangement drawing for, uh, for this equipment, and we would like to make uh, a detail for, let's say, for uh, the manhole, for example, and uh, skirt. So you have two ways to make a detail for the uh, manhole uh, the first way by uh, making a group for the manhole in uh, seg 3 here you have uh, m1 here so you can create a group and include those items inside this group by that way you can uh, create uh, uh, a detail for a nozzle let's make it for a new nozzle let's add a new one Let's, uh, for example, create M2. Show you how you can do that. Now we have uh, M2. Let's make it looks like M1. Okay, and let's add a flange to this nozzle. So M2 flange. Okay. And let's make it looks like M1, uh, M1, sorry. Okay. And from here to add a new group, uh, let's define uh, change first the 
and the orientation of this manhole. Let's minimize this one. Let's make it on uh, on the other side. Okay. So from here, let's make it on the other side, on the same location. Now from the group, let's select M2, and from here, let's uh, from the group option, let's create add group. Okay, and should you should plan for the groups before creating uh, your drawings because sometimes uh, you may need to delete uh, some items and recreate them again like bolts if you import them in uh, a group after creation. But right now, let's add a group like uh, M1, M2 assembly detail to detail, and it will be from M2. Up to this flange. Let's save this one. You can figure that now you have uh, a folder here, this folder, all the group. This group will include the uh, nozzle M2 and the M2 flange. Let's create this group. Okay, we have this nozzle. Now let's add uh, a gasket tab blind like the other. So M2 gasket. Okay. After that, let's make it looks like M1 gasket. Let's add a blind. M2 blind. And make it look like M1 blind. Let's add a uh, hand grip to this nozzle. M2 grip. And M2 stud. M2 David. Okay. <clears throat> In each one of those, let's make it looks like the other one. So from here, select the grip. M2 stub. For the David, let's make it looks like M1. And now let's run the assembly to start creating those items inside the group. Okay, now after uh, updating and creating this manhole and this David, we would like to import them inside a drawer. Okay, uh, so here let's come back to SCG drawing and from this uh, node, which is the group node, which includes the uh, this manhole with all elements, let's select create drawing and from create drawing, let's select the drawing size. And uh, from here, select the elevation of, of uh, this nozzle. And uh, you could select the uh, top view if you would like to make a top view. Define the spacing between them uh, and the centimeter. Here, let's select the orientation view of the elevation. So let's open the uh, simply of this group. As you can see here in uh, the tree, it's uh, an assembly. Here include all elements of this nozzle. So it's a one in one group. So if you open it, you will find it like that. It's not like uh, in 
uh, M1. Because if you open N1, M1, for example, that's M1, you will find the nozzle only without the flange or gasket. But here we make a group to include all items in this uh, assembly. Now you will be able to uh, generate a detail for, for this one. Okay, to take a look uh, to this element from that view, we can, uh, we can adjust that view to suit uh, our requirements. Here you can figure that it's a right view, but the text uh, not in a correct uh, direction. We need to rotate it. So we can make that one uh, and flip it as a front view. So the text will be like that. So when we select the front view from here, we will get the elevation view for this nozzle like that. So let's save this and close it. So here we select the front view. And from here, let's uh, define the location and orientation for this one. Let's make the scale one to eight. And let's add a bill of material. Let's delete, uh, remove the nodes and building details. Uh, let's add a bill of material for, for this uh, simply. And uh, from here, uh, from the title block, it's known with material. EWG002. And we will make it as a one sheet. So it will be from one sheet. So if we click on the drawing, here that the drawing size, it changes to be A2, not A1. And now we will uh, get the bill of material of, of uh, this one. Okay, we need to adjust the uh, location of, of uh, those views to make them make sense. So from here, let's right click on that one. You can create drawing. And from, uh, from views, let's change the location on the X direction. I think uh, the location on the X direction is uh, maybe we need to move it on the left side a little bit. So let's minimize this one to 12. And for uh, the uh, Y direction here, so uh, to know the values here, how we can how we calculate it here. If you make a sketch of that form here, that's the reference point. If we make a circuit here, that's the reference point. So the center point of the view, the center point of the view will be defined from the location from here to there. Okay, so. That's the location from this view from here to there. Okay. okay so let's uh, modify that. Let's make it like that and increase the scale a little bit. So let's make it one to six. And let's create drawing. Here. Okay, uh, we need to move it down a little bit. So come back here. Drawing. Okay, drawing. Don't test the teletium. OK, I think now it's, uh, it's OK. And here you can figure that the bill of material of, of this is simply here. Let's move, let's move this uh, revision table for SCG from here and move that one a little bit up. And that's the revision table that we have. So we could modify it. Here, let's add a detail for uh, the elements like the eye bolt to the, the clip and uh, the arm. So if you would like to make something like that, let's open. Uh, uh, let's open this simply of, of this arm. Here you have a detailed. Uh, here we have this arm. So let's take it on uh, the detail here. So from this view. Can import this arm like that. 
And if you would like to uh, make it perpendicular to a defined surface, you can take a look to that view from here, like that to get correct values. Changes the scale. Let's make it one, two, six, like that. Define the name of that. Then R. And click on save. And we have that one. And let's add some center lines to this one, like that. So if you would like to measure that value. Let's make it with hidden lines to get the location of the bin. Sorry. As you can see, we need to uh, update the style of this drawing. So from here, as, as we did on the previous drawing, if we if you have an exported uh, style or already this style is saved on the reference drawing you will not need to update it but if in case of you would like to, uh, to change the dimension of time we will uh, import it uh, from an exported uh, style So from on board, we will include this style. So it will be like that. And the diameter of this road here. I'd like to add annotation for that one. As a vent hole or a chamfer, all of that you can do it. Here let's add some details for the mosaic and for the David offset from here to there. If you would like to add a detail for uh, the clips or the eye bolt, quite the same way. Let's open those clips here and on the details. Let's add a detail for that. Scale down to four. Here, so we can edit like that. Okay. Define the name of this David Lung. You can change the scale, so let's increase this a little bit. One to two, for example, and move them out here, down here. If you would like to add a building style to notify the, uh, it will be a circular uh, weld, so let's say six millimeters or a groove weld, so you can make it a groove weld. So let's modify that. Okay, let's make it groove on one side, like that. By the same way, you can add uh, another uh, details and the uh, balloon item number. So you can add it here. So from the balloon item number, let's select nozzle tag. 
you can select port number, sorry, item number here. Okay, as you can figure, those uh, flanges uh, not updated with the item number. Why? Because we make the uh, update item number before creating them. So we need to uh, one more time click on update item number to reflect the values of, of those here and there. So that's the item number. Here we have this eye bolt. And let's include another balance for washer and for the mud, washer on the mud. The same for this bolt. Okay, and for the lifting gloves. Sorry, item number here. Okay, now let's update the item number and come back to uh, the drawing to check those uh, values. So. Uh, let's come back here and for the bill of material here, let's click on update item. As mentioned, this uh, process takes a minutes, depends on the uh, number of elements. I will uh, take a cup of water and come back. Sir, mm -hmm. now we yes. have created now we created this new manway, right? Newly added, new newly we have added this. Hello. I don't understand your point. Yeah. Are... Now, now after creating the drawing, we have added this manway. M2, manway M2. Mm. Yeah, so to reflect this in G, uh, our GA drawing, we have to again we have to create the drawing and not the uh, drawing, the bill of material. No, update uh, the bill of material on the general arrangement. Uh, so we have to create a completely only only or uh, complete table. I will, I will show you after updating the item number. I will, I was just waiting the update item number and I will show you how to update the model table because the model table we need to update it because we have a new one. And the bill of material because we have new items. Yeah. So let's also stop it from here. Okay, I stop it because it takes a long time. So to update the bill of material from here, how we can do that, and the same for the nozzle table. We mentioned this point before during updating the cover on the bill of material. We didn't uh, repeat the drawing, we just update the bill of material. So if you open the general arrangement drawing, you will find a new nozzle appear here. So if you would like to notify this nozzle on that drawing, just add the location for, for this one. Add a uh, balloon tag for this new nozzle. Into. Okay, and we need to update it here on the nozzle table and the same for the bill of material. To update that, as mentioned, from drawings we will select the vessel and from drawings select career drawing. And from the annotation we will select the bill of material and the nozzle table. And be sure that you select update item table. So when you click on career drawing, those tables will be updated.
here after updating the block material on the second sheet. Here that's the nozzle table. Here we have M1 and M2. Okay, and if you would like to uh, increase the width of, as we discussed, if you would like to make a format and update like that, you can make it like that. And if you would like to arrange uh, according to the uh, according to the uh, the al alphabet, you can move the uh, nozzles from up to down. So we have one, two, three. Here, let's move on four like that. So you can five, seven, and one, and two. So you can get the arrangement by that way. Okay, any uh, questions? Hello? No, no, sir. No, I understood the arrangement. Okay, so let's discuss uh, the received questions from your side uh, today uh, morning. Uh, Okay, let me open the email on my phone. One minute. Go down. Let him open on display. Okay. okay, the first point, which is uh, items are missing while uh, importing MDB uh, file to SCG. Uh, this point, I uh, discuss it with uh, uh, Libin when he sent me. Uh, MDB file yesterday. Uh, for the uh, nozzle size larger than 24 inches, it's uh, in case of including uh, flange uh, according to Series A or Series B, that's not mentioned on the uh, access database file. Okay, some information not exported to the access database file, and we talked many times uh, to Hexagon BBM to uh, update the uh, access database file and we we, know we need more information in this file to give uh, a complete uh, detailed model on SCG because we have a shortage on information on the access database uh, file. They are promising us to update that, but until now, nothing from their uh, side. The same for heat exchanger, no information about the uh, Tube sheets, uh, the whole uh, the tube pattern arrangement, body flanges. So, a lot of information not uh, not mentioned uh, in the access database file. So, the issue comes from here uh, because of the missing uh, data in one element. So, it may cause a problem in the second uh, element. Uh, insulation, second point, insulation not coming correctly in shell. Uh, I forward this issue to uh, CG development team. But right now, if you would like to uh, update it yourself to uh, avoid waiting the next release, let's add uh, an insulation to the shell. So from here, let's add uh, insulation. So from external, let's add insulation. Okay, and from here, let's select the uh, thickness, uh, material, and density, and let's make it full insulation, and let's create room. Okay, as you can see, the uh, insulation comes on the other side, not on the correct side. It's easy to update, just to double click on the insulation from here, and you have the element, which is the insulation element. Just open the extrude direction and flip the direction for the other side, like that. Okay, I will, I will, I, inshallah, uh, we will uh, update it on the next release, but you can update it yourself. It's, it will not take the time to. Reflected in your okay, so by that way you can 
uh, modify the direction of uh, the insulation. Again, you will select the insulation node and double click on the insulation part. Okay, to go to the level of the part itself, or here from the assembly, you will select the part and open the part. Okay, so now you have this insulation, and from here you can flip the direction of the insulation. Select flip to flip the direction. That's it. The third point, which is the skirt access wire mesh cover. Okay, I think we, we covered this point uh, during the session. Uh, if you have a non-supported element in SEG library, you have three different ways. The first way, by sketching it on the drawing, like in AutoCAD, just make a 2D sketch. Okay, as you can figure, the insulation will be reflected here on the model. And if you would like to make it as a hidden lines, so from here, let's uh, find it in the browser. And that's the assembly. If you would like to make the lines of the insulation as a hidden lines, you can make it like that. So from properties, you can change the type of, of the line, change the width. And if you would like to change the color, for example, let's make it with that color. So you can change the color and the, uh, the line style on the drawing by the way. Uh, sorry. Let's complete the first uh, the third question, which is access, skirt access wire mesh. Here, as we discussed, you can add it as a sketch on the drawing, okay? Or you can create it as a solid model on uh, Autodesk Inventor and add it to SEG library as we done did here by adding this element to uh, SEG library. We add it here, okay? So you can added by that way uh, or you can send us uh, rise up your request to uh, for, to the uh, SEG development team to include this configuration on SEG and in that case we will need uh, some information regarding the uh, a detailed dimension or a detailed uh, sketches for uh, this attachment to uh, give the ability to uh, SEG development team to create it and include it in the library, and it will be available on the next release. <laughs> okay, the fourth point, which is uh, model um, updation details, not updating in drawing tables automatically. I think we cover uh, this point when we update the nozzle table and the bill of material table and. Uh, I show you how you can deal with that. And let's say that uh, again one more time. Uh, here on the drawings, for example, if you would like to update uh, a table or update uh, welding details from the annotation table, just select the update table automatically. So this is a checkbox. Okay. And select the required the tables that you would like to update. The same for welding details. If you make uh, update on the welding details and you would like to uh, update it, just select this checkbox and from the welding style, update this checkbox and add your welding styles to this uh, form. Okay. Uh, wash are not coming along with uh, stud bolts. Actually, the model of stud bolts here in SEG not include any washers, but if you would like to uh, add a washer to the model, uh, you can edit uh, from the external library. Let's say, for example, we have. Uh, let's create a stud bolt uh, or uh, anchor bolt to show you how you can uh, make that or uh, how you can uh, get a washer to your mode. Here from SEG templates, you have a list for uh, bolts and nuts and other four accessories, and you will find here. Uh, circular washer. As we discuss, uh, when we get uh, cross B shackle and four uh, nozzles, roll, hot rolled sections, uh, tie rods, and wires for for lifting and uh, transportation. So from here, from accessories uh, or from uh, the bolts, let's uh, create uh, a J bolt for the for the anchor bolt. And uh, from here, let's open the, uh, the form of this J bolt. And you can select 
the size of uh, the bolt. Define the lens. So let's make it a millimeter. Uh, define the uh, thread lens, which is dimension B, this this edge. Dimension C, which is the radius. Okay, dimension uh, the lens, which is the thread lens. Okay, the nut offset from the top, the location of the nut will be at uh, let's give it 60, and from here let's change the size to uh, 30 millimeters diameter. Okay, so we have this J volt, so let's increase dimension B a little bit. Let's make it 100 and increase uh, dimension C. Okay, so we have this J volt to save it as discussed. Don't save it from here because this button will not. So from a simply save document and come here to save that one as anchor. J volt. Save. Okay, now let's create a uh, stud and uh, not and washer. From here, let's create a washer. So it's M30. Define the material of, of this one. I think it's uh, 30 or 32. It's a 30, okay, the same value of the knot. To save the knot from here, let's save the current document and anchor knot uh, M30. And for the washer, let's add a washer from the accessories. Here and from that one, let's define the inside diameter and the outside diameter of the washer, the thickness of the washer, and let's save it. Save the document. Okay, now let's create an assembly, including those items. So from here, let's open a new assembly and let's import those items. So we have the jack bolt. Let's import the nut. So from here, let's use the user coordinate system. We have the UCS like that. So the nut will come here. Or if you would like to make the assembly manually, you can do it by making the center line comes to the center line and define the offset of the nut from here to there. Define this value to be 50 millimeters with a negative value or 60 millimeters with a negative value, like that. After that, you can add your Washer like that. So you have this anchor bolt detail, and you can use it. <coughs> sorry, you can use it in your drawing. Let's call this. Here we have this anchor bolt detail. So let's save it. So from here, let's save this document. Come here, anchor. Okay, so for, for example, for example, if you would like to add a detail for this anchor bolt in any drawing, but let's import uh, it here on, on the drawing. So from here, let's add a view for this anchor bolt. Okay, change the scale. Okay, like that. So you have that one, and if you would like to make the thread appear, just from here from option, just select thread feature, and if you have interference edges, 
you can make it appear. Now you have the thread appear on the drawing. So you can find a thread. If you would like to add a sketch, for example, uh, here you can create your sketch. Like if you would like to add a uh, hatching for something. So from here to there. And let's define this 15 meters. Make those lines on the sketch only and hatch here. So if you would like to add a detail like that, you can you can do anything, uh, and it's uh, dynamic, not like in AutoCAD. So any change will be reflected to the drawing. For example, here if we measure this value and the length from here to there, we have that length. For example, if we come back to the anchor. Here and update the uh, the lens to make it 600 and increase the uh, dimension B, uh, sorry, dimension C to make it 200 like that. So when you finish the sketch and come back to the drawing, automatically it will be updated. Okay, here that's the projection and here the. Uh, the offset of, of this one. Just you will make some adjustments to, to that, those values. Okay, by that way you can make a bolt or anchor bolt by using uh, and add your uh, add washers to uh, add washers to uh, the element. Okay, uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, detailed drawing creation. I think we discuss how we can make a detailed drawing for anything like skirt or manway by the same concept. You can do that. Or for a skirt, for example, you can make a detail for the skirt by the same way. Or let's discuss another way by making uh, a separate assembly. Here, if we open an, a new assembly like that one. And we would like to get uh, a skirt detail without uh, nozzle NC. So we will make select those items. And from here, let's remove uh, the uh, nozzles. So we we will not uh, we will not include the uh, nozzles. So we will remove the elbow and the bottom head. So we have the skirt. Uh, skirt events, skirt opening, access, and the ground lock. So let's take a copy and inside this is simply let's make a paste. So now we have the an, a separate assembly for the skirt. Okay. And this assembly, we can use it on details. So let's save this assembly, which created by hand, and save this document and save it as skirt. There are many ways to to prepare your drawings and make a modification on them. So you can take a copy from uh, the detailed drawing. For example, we have a detailed drawing for. Sorry, let's go to the workspace. We have a drawing for M2, for example. Let's take a copy from it and make it a skirt drawing. And here we will, but take, 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 take care of that uh, and remember that this drawing you create it by hand, not by using SE. But I show you another way to create the details. So let's delete those views. Let's delete this bill of material. And from here, let's define the uh, detail of the drawing. It will be a skirt detail. Okay. Uh, don't forget to change the drawing number, all of that. And from here, let's <coughs> <coughs> sorry, let's import the skirt detail from the back view. Okay, and define the scale one to ten. 
like that. And if you would like to change the scale of the drawing from here, uh, the drawing size, sorry, you can change the drawing size from here to make it from A1 to A0. So you can make it like that. Okay, and add your uh, dimensions to, to this one as a skirt and add the uh, skirt balloons. Like that. And select parts only. So you can add, sorry, skirt balloons. Parts only. Events opening like that. Okay, by that way you can make another detail and uh, make sections. Make uh, sorry, like here. And if you would like to make a detail for for the event, for example, here let's make a detail for for the event. Let's take a section outside here. That's a four for the vent. So we need to rotate this view and make it vertical. So let's make it vertical. Like that. Now we have this skirt opening. And if you would like to make a crew for this view, like that, and you can move it anywhere in your drawing, change the scale. So let's change the scale of this open a little bit. So let's make it one, two, six. Let's remove those lines. Okay, now you can add projection for this nozzle from outside and inside the total lens, the outside mm -hmm. diameter. Okay. And if you would like to add you like that. So you can make many things uh, by using the features of Autodesk Inventor itself to create your drawings. So let's go to the next uh, question. BIB uh, uh, manway. I think we discussed this point regarding the BIB uh, standard, uh, and we could check uh, that. Let me check. One more point here. Um, mm -hmm. I um, I will check that, but uh, as I remember, some of the DIB standards are included for manways and top David. And if you uh, would like to include something, just talk to us and send your request to uh, CG development team. And inshallah, we can do that on the next release. Uh, nozzle stiffener blade creation. OK. Uh, let's add some uh, different type of stiffeners. Here for, uh, sorry, for if we uh, have We can add uh, stiffeners for uh, nozzles on the top head. So if you select the top head, for example, and the four elements, you will find the nozzle uh, ribs. So if you select it, let's add a rib for nozzle in the pipe, in the pipe ribs. Here, if we select this one, you can define the orientation and uh, elevation of, of the uh, uh, stiffening ribs. Okay, add uh, up to four ribs to this nozzle. Uh, on the uh, on the shell, you can add two different types of uh, supporting ribs. Here for the external attachment, uh, you can add uh, nozzle ribs. This type, type one. 
here this type of ribs uh, in, it's like uh, stiffening uh, ribs by that way okay and you can make it connected to the flange like that so you will need to define the those uh, values by that way another type of stiffening support ribs on the shell here for the external attachments you will find this type which is nozzle support ribs Here you, you can add stiffening grips uh, to the nozzle by that way. Or for the helicide nozzles, if you have a helicide nozzle, you can add a stiffening grip uh, to that by a single stiffening grip or a double stiffening grip, and you can define the uh, contact angle between them. Here, that type is a single uh, rib, and that one is a double uh, stiffening grips. Okay, the next question. Slope vessel. Uh, inshallah, uh, I could prepare a, a detailed video for uh, slope vessel. Already, we, we have on our website, uh, on our channel, uh, a detailed videos for uh, tilted uh, vessels and how you can uh, do that. That's one of uh, live webinars for uh, for the tilted vessels. I could share it with with you. I will get this link okay so how, how i can share it uh, across uh, teams is there a chat uh, tab or something like that is there an option to uh... there's a message box you can just uh, go there on the message box Message box. Yeah, okay. uh, right side, right side, right. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, then here you can write. Okay, is this video for uh, the uh, tilted vessel, and you can uh, see how you can uh, define the position of the saddles. Uh, And nozzles and how you can define the projection from the reference point many things you can you will find it in this video and inshallah i could prepare another uh, video for the sample uh, that received from your uh, side okay um, question okay how to update the asmi uh, format nameplate how to add client nameplate <clears throat> okay Regarding the uh, 3D model, uh, we discuss how we can add uh, an, uh, a nameplate, uh, the ASME and the client nameplate here. And if you would like to add another uh, nameplate like process uh, company nameplate, like uh, let's say uh, Bal or Barker, if you would like uh, to add a nameplate for that, it's, it's easy to, to do that in, in this information. Oh, uh, do you ask him for something else? Uh, I asked for this nameplate format. Actually, this one, this one for nameplate bracket, right? The attachment, attachment nameplate. That format, we have to make it separately or any option to add here, sir? Oh, as a filling data of, of yes, 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 yes. Yes. Here on the, uh, on the, on the rebuilt uh, groups, you will find uh, two different formats, or three different formats of the name, the name blade. One of them, which is uh, uh, takes yeah, uh, this yeah. format, so you can paste it directly here and change the uh, values. R T one, uh, nothing here certified uh, by yet, and uh, manufacturer serial number C note C note. 10, for example, and year of construction, like that. So you will get the uh, nameplate like that, and just you will need to fill the values of, of that one. How to fill those values? So let's, uh, let's move this anchor board to the here. Let's move this one a little bit here. Okay. Uh, by uh, right click on 
this form and edit definition. So you will go to the level of editing the text. You can edit the text for the values only of the pressure and the temperature. The same here for the minimum design metal temperature and uh, pressure. OK, but the other values, which is certified by or manufacturer serial number, those values will be filled uh, automatically when you uh, import the visit. And if you would like to edit it, you can define it from edit format. So it's this form you can uh, include and edit the uh, this form. OK, and if you would like to create your own standard client or as me or you can make your own block and use it in any other drawing after that. OK, in, in case of, for example, if you have uh, this uh, block and you would like to uh, copy it to another uh, another draw, let's create an empty drawing here and you can add it to the uh, samples. So you have this one, you can import it on another row by that way. OK, it's, it's a block you can copy and paste in uh, any other row. OK, the next question. Uh, OK, skirt template and uh, transportation row. OK, regarding so, uh, the, uh, 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 this is about the uh, ask me nameplate and there is one more client nameplate where many information we have to keep. So how we can generate uh, here any standard format available or we have to generate some format as per client requirement. OK, as mentioned, you can make your standard look here. The ask me nameplate is included, but the client nameplate is different from client to another. Takes a yeah, different, yeah. completely different shape. So we, we 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 didn't prefer to make something like that, and the user will okay, completely okay. change it. Understood. So you can you can make your. I, I will show you how you can make something. From if you would like to create find a new sample. For Here now we we in the level of detail of the uh, this sketch. Let's create uh, a sketch like that to define the lens. The height. But let's add look here. Another one there. OK, let's add a text here. Like that. Change the size. So select this. And for the text, you could make it uh, centered. So from here, let's make it from center and center. And make it aligned with this horizontal line. Make it aligned with this vertical uh, line. Uh, and I will show you one more thing regarding if you would like to make uh, automated fill uh, data from here, if you would like uh, uh, promoted entry. Like like that. So can make it. Sorry. Uh, let's make it. Um, a pressure. A value. So if you finish this. And if you would like to add this one here, you will get this value. So you will update this namely by, by that way. It's a, a quick way here. We add a promise value so you it will be reflected directly to the. Uh, uh, to the drawing. OK, and you can change the scale orientation anything because it's a block, so you can change the scale if you would like to make it scale of and rotate it to 45 degrees, for example. So. It will be. It will be like that. So it's a block you can deal with it. Uh, any questions regarding the name blade? And oh, the name so you can move. OK, uh, skirt template and the transportation row. For uh, the skirt template, uh, we could include uh, a symbol shape on SEG uh, 
standard uh, library, but right now nothing related to the uh, template. And if you would like to make uh, to make a template uh, and uh, take the same dimensions of the skirt, you can take a copy from the base plate and make some modification regarding the material and thickness, uh, the whole diameter uh, on this template. But right now nothing uh, exists on SEG external library or SEG library. Regarding transportation drone, you can make a, a transportation drone for this visit. You have different ways to, to do that. I, I will discuss uh, two different ways. The first way, if you would like to add a new uh, equipment here, uh, but it's it will be uh, include just the two saddles only, no main elements, just the two saddles, and those saddles you will use them for transportation. Okay, that's a way. The second way you can create a new uh, project include the transportation saddles and you can use them in your uh, draw. Uh, let's uh, go with the first uh, first uh, issue, uh, first uh, approach, which is uh, so it's the Okay, let's add a transportation. And from here, let's add a shell. It will be as a connected connection point, not a real shell. We will not make a real shell. So it will be uh, transportation. Okay. And after adding it, we will make it uh, as a connection point with the same data of, of the shell on the first visit, which is both uh, as number 1219 with a thickness 12 millimeters. Okay, so now we have a new uh, connection point and we can add a transportation saddles to this one. So from here, let's add uh, saddle one. Okay, so from here, let's and uh, that saddle, let's uh, create, let's keep the dimensions, uh, just uh, let's increase this value to one meter point five. Uh, I think we could we could keep all dimensions uh, as they are, uh, just add the uh, outside ribs and define the outside ribs. That. Okay. And let's create the simple. We will generate a new vessel, uh, including a shell element, uh, not a real element. We will use it as a connection point, and we will add a, a saddle on it. And we will use this saddle as a transportation uh, saddle. Okay. Now it's created on behind. Seconds and will be done. Uh, Ahmad, yes. we, ha uh, we have one scheduled meeting is after the 15 20 minute. So, can we conclude? And <laughs> this session is very interesting and very helpful for, for us, but uh, we have to leave. So, how best we can? Is it possible for you to like? Uh, give, give me uh, five minutes, or give me five minutes or ten minutes to create the, uh, mm -hmm. the final drawing of the uh, transportation and show you how you can make uh, how you can make the assembly and how you can reflect it. Okay. Here we have this uh, saddle. Okay, so let's create a new assembly. Let's import uh, the transportation saddles. So from here, from the assembly, let's import the saddles. Okay. Sorry. Just. Okay. Let's a better move. OK. 
okay, we have two with the spacing between them, let's say two meters. Select the component. Now let's import the vessel assembly. Here we have the assembly, the equipment. From view, let's remove the UCSs. And just we need to make relation like that and get the uh, the tailing lug to be vertical. So here we have this tailing lug. Let's make it parallel to that one. So we have the tailing lug like that, like that. And let's change uh, the uh, location of the saddle a little bit so we can move it between those two nozzles. So we can make the first saddle here and increase the pattern. Uh, we can move it a little bit. Okay, I think okay, a little bit okay. We can increase it to 30 millimeters or 10 millimeters. Okay. We have this one like that. Now let's uh, add the tightening wire from here. Let's uh, and from the CG library, let's get uh, tightening uh, slings. Defines the uh, outside diameter of of the vessel. So the outside diameter of the vessel is 24. And the vessel offset from uh, the bottom is 0.5. The sling diameter and sling bottom spacing. Okay. So let's save that. So from CG, we can save the active document. And let's come back to the assembly here. And let's add the tightening. Wires. After that, by adding another constraints, you can control the location of the tightening wire to make it uh, make sense. Make sense like like that, for example. Now you have adjusted the locations, everything, but. Right now, after creating this one, we can make the uh, transportation going. So here, let's get the uh, transportation going. If we open the project folder, let's make it transportation. Okay. Okay, let's remove the, uh, it's an old drawing, so I will remove the uh, old seals. Okay, so you have this one. Let's import, let's delete the old uh, border and the title block. Let's delete this border and the title block from here. And get uh, the current title block. Here's that's the current title block. So let's come here and paste. After that, let's insert. So from here, you can import the drawing detail for the transportation. I think uh, we uh, didn't uh, save it. So hello, Mr. Yes. Ahmed. Yes. Hello. Yes, I'm hearing you. Yeah, so uh, any idea how long it will take now? So I think vertical message is done. I think you are doing the horizontal vessel, right? Again? 
I think we, no, uh, Deepak, Deepak, we are now discussing transportation and I convey this message with uh, Ahmad. So we'll conclude soon. Miss. Just uh, we want to see this one and okay. the rest we'll just discuss and we'll try to go faster. OK, OK. And one more thing that uh, that we were discussing about the trial license. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, Mr. Ahmad, actually, uh, as you know, uh, that uh, this company, uh, GR purchased one license. OK, OK, annual license. OK, so but they have two users. So what they are thinking is that if they can get 15 days trial license. OK, so by the time in 15 days, their second user will be ready and they can do some practice and then they can add one more new license in that. Is it OK? We can provide the trial license to them for 15 yes, okay. days. It's, it's available. They can get it uh, online, uh, the online license and I will share with you. OK, share it, uh, uh, share it with me. OK, so I can forward them uh, them. Uh, so the uh, second user can do the enough practice in 15 days and then we can they can proceed further. Yeah, it will okay. be great help. Yeah. yeah. OK, OK, sir. Yeah, please carry on, sir. OK, uh, here uh, after creating the, the, the drone for, for the equipment. Uh, here, let's make it with gold color and like that. Here we have the uh, transportation drone. After adding the dimensions to this drawing, it will be ready to uh, to export. OK, one more thing for finishing this uh, session. How to export your drawing uh, to PDF or DWG? Here, uh, if you select the vision and from drawing, you can export it. Select from drawing, select export to drawing to. And you will get this. Uh, Form. You can select the extensions that you would like to export, like BDF, uh, AutoCAD DWG, Inventor IDW, or any other extension. Uh, if you uh, have uh, another drawing not included in SEG, because a drawing uh, like this drawing for uh, transportation, we make it by hand. So how you can export it to BDF? From here, you will find a button which is Save Copy As. If you click on it, you will get this form. And Save Copy As will give you an option to export the two many different extensions like PDF and just define the drone uh, transportation and uh, the extension. And from here, click on Save. Now it will be exported to uh, PDF extension, or if you would like to export it in DWG extension, you can do that by using Save Copy As part. OK, any other questions uh, be before ending this uh, session? I think we still have uh, five or eight points we still 